From an outsider's perspective, Yudo Hyuga is considered a traditional genius of the Hyuga clan. Tenacious, powerful, gentle, and calm, a reliable partner at all times. However, no one knows that on countless silent nights, this young branch family genius strokes the cursed seal of the caged bird on his forehead, falling asleep with sharp needles clenched between his teeth, fearing he might voice the madness and anger buried deep in his heart in his dreams. If Itachi Uchiha can do it, why can't I, Yudo Hyuga? A you Naruto world. What's up guys? It's your boy, Omni-sensei. Welcome to, What if I was reborn in Naruto as Branch Yuga? Becoming a Villain. Part 1. Remastered. Due to how unpopular the voice of that other video of this part was. I had to redo this part. I hope you guys re-enjoy it. Leave your thoughts on this voiceover below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Also, remember to check out the original story, link in the description. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. Pop, the moment his toe touched the branch, chakra gathered in his legs. The branch barely bent as the boy leaped over ten meters. In a series of quick movements, the boy passed through the dense forest like a gust of wind. He was young, with a handsome face, wearing black tight-fitting clothes and a green standard-issue vest armor. His thick black hair was tied at the end with a red ribbon, giving him a gentle and calm demeanor. If a stranger saw him, they would definitely notice two distinctive features. Firstly, the metal forehead protector with the Kanoha emblem tied to his head. Secondly, those pure white, unblemished eyes. He is a member of the Hyuga clan from Kanoha village in the Land of Fire. A powerful shinobi clan, the Hyuga clan has formidable combat abilities stem from their dojitsu, the Byakugan. As a result, the Hyuga clan has always been a force to be reckoned with. Fifteen kilometers left for us to reach the Land of Fire's border. While running, Yudo Hyuga calculated the distance. Too dangerous. He abruptly halted, stomping heavily on the tree trunk, instantly stopping his high-speed movement. His strong and flexible physique was evident. Whoosh 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 whoosh. Four figures quickly converged around him, forming a tactical formation with their backs against each other. What's wrong, Yudo Hyuga? Did you find something? Asked a middle-aged man with short hair and an indifferent expression. Yudo nodded. sujiura sama there are footprints in the forest. A breeze blew through the forest, and the other three genin instinctively tightened their grip on their kanai. The team led by Jonin Tetsuro Sujiura consisted of one Jonin, one Hyuga Chunin, and three civilian genin, a surprise reconnaissance team formed during wartime. There were no females in the group. So, is it the enemy? Tetsuro said, his tone still calm. Well done, Hyuga. We could avoid th dash. He stopped mid-talking and shook his head. Never mind. Tetsuro drew a kunai, feeling its sharp edge. If they can block this path, they may have set up ambushes elsewhere too. Let's charge through. After all, we have the Byakugan. The three genin sighed in relief, looking at Tetsuro and Yudo with respect. The history of the shinobi world has proven that the Byakugan's reconnaissance abilities are trustworthy. Yes, Sujiura-sama, Yudo replied respectfully. He brought his index and middle fingers together in front of his nose, forming a seal. Chakra instantly surged to his optic nerve. Veins bulged around his eyes, and his pale blue pupils appeared in the center. His vision changed, extending into a unique 360-degree field, revealing chakra flows, chakra pathways, hidden birds behind trees, and even animals drinking water kilometers away. With the Byakugan's enhanced vision and perception, everything was laid bare. Yudo lowered his hand. While activating the Byakugan only required chakra concentration, 
Huga clan members often used seals to focus their minds, a habit that became a family tradition over time. Seeing that Yudo was ready, Tetsuro took the lead, charging ahead. Yudo followed closely, with the three genin forming a semicircle around him, as they resumed their journey. This time, they were fully alert. In Yudo's vision, everything turned into shades of black and white, semi-transparent trees moving swiftly backward. He observed his surroundings meticulously, not missing any suspicious signs. Finally, during their rapid movement, a few tiny, humanoid strings appeared in Yudo's sight, chakra flowing through chakra pathways. Found them. Yudo exhaled, signaling his teammates with a series of hand signs, then sped up to inform Tetsuro. Despite his speed, by the time he relayed the information, they were only 400 meters away from the enemy. Shinobis honed by war possessed superior combat instincts. Though newly formed, Yudo's team displayed commendable synergy, maintaining their speed as if nothing had happened. Until Tetsuro, at the forefront, was within 20 meters of the first enemy. 20 meters for a Kanoha Jonin was nearly face to face. Bang! In a flash, Yudo saw Tetsuro appear directly above the enemy hidden underground. Tetsuro's kunai stabbed into the ground. He released it and stomped hard at it. Screams and blood splattered from below. Using a basic body flicker technique combined with Yudo's precise intel, he instantly eliminated one enemy. Yet, Tetsuro's assault continued. Ignoring the shouts and sounds of weapons from elsewhere, he calmly formed hand seals. Though using a kunai with his foot was unconventional, the small risk was worth it, freeing his hands to form seals. Ox monkey here rat boa but ox horse but rat. Forty-four seals were formed flawlessly. Jonin level chakra surged through specific pathways within his body. At its peak, Tetsuro opened his mouth. Water style. Water dragon bullet. Tons of water gushed from his mouth, forming a tree-sized water dragon that crashed to the ground. Rumble. The enemy below was crushed into blood mist, the massive water flow was tearing up the ground, uprooting trees, sweeping away chains, explosive tags, and iron hooks. The traps were obliterated by the powerful water jutsu. Fighting amidst enemy traps was unwise. As an experienced shinobi, Tetsuro immediately altered the battlefield. Yudo and the three genin regrouped around Tetsuro, ready to fight. As the water receded and dust cleared, several shinobi emerged from the other side. The Kanoha team's hearts sank. There were too many, six in plain sight, likely with three more hidden. The enemy leader, a tall man, walked forward, tying a cloud village forehead protector. After a brief silence, both sides charged. No words exchanged, not even verbal reconnaissance. In Kanoha year 55, under the immense pressure of looming war, constant border skirmishes, and the ever-tense political climate, the string of tension could snap any moment, triggering a shinobi world war. In the forest, Kanoha and Cloud Shinobi clashed, with their lives losing instantly. No one mourned. Kanai gleamed coldly, Jutsu flashed relentlessly. They stole each other's lives, colder than the steel they wielded. For reasons ample or insufficient, those who gave their lives, are shinobis. In the depths of the forest, Three or four shinobi corpses lay scattered. Not far away, Yudo was engaged in close combat with an enemy. The veins around Yudo's eyes bulged as he focused his Byakugan on the enemy, easily detecting the glowing white chakra flowing within the opponent's body. The Kumogakure shinobi Yudo was fighting, was tall and muscular with powerful limbs. Bang! The Kumo shinobi suddenly threw a punch. Yudo raised his right arm to block, absorbing the massive force. He staggered but remained standing. This kid. The shinobi thought in shock. Kumogakure shinobis are generally known for their kenjutsu and taijutsu, placing a high value on physical strength. Despite his young age, Yudo's strength was comparable to his much older opponent. The shinobi was momentarily stunned, his thoughts scattered. Even though he maintained a strong fighting stance, the slight disruption in his chakra flow was evident to Yudo's Byakugan. 
For a shinobi, chakra is the clearest indicator of their physical and mental state. Detecting such a subtle disturbance and exploiting it for an attack requires great skill. Yudo is a master at it. With a powerful leap, Yudo surged forward, his swift movement leaving a small crater in the ground. Already close to his opponent, Yudo's sudden burst of speed closed the distance instantly. The shinobi instinctively jumped back, trying to create space, but his chakra was momentarily out of sync. Yudo seized the opportunity and drove a precise, chakra-infused palm into the enemy's chest. His chakra burst through the shinobi's skin, devastating his internal organs, muscles, and nervous system by using the famed technique of the Hyuga clan. Gentle fist, the shinobi screamed in pain, thrown back until he crashed into a tree. Yudo followed up instantly, a quick jab to the heart with his fingers, ending the shinobi's life. Giyuich. The Kumo shinobi groaned weakly, glancing at his killer. I recognize you, you're the jewel of the Hyuga. Yudo watched him dispassionately until the light faded from his eyes. Confirming the enemy was dead, Yudo deactivated his Byakugan and leaned against the tree, breathing heavily. The Byakugan strain, though not as intense as the Sharingan's, still took a toll on his brain. From the initial assault led by Tetsuro Sujiura, through the chaotic skirmish, and to the one-on-one -on -one combats, ten minutes had passed. Yudo had already killed three enemies, including an elite Chunin. Despite his exceptional skills and the title Jewel of the Hyuga Yudo was only twelve, the prolonged battle wore him down. Phew! He panted, taking some soldier pills from his pouch and quickly swallowing them. I can't rest here. If their Jonin comes my way, alone, I'll be done. Muttering to himself, Yudo left the bodies behind and rushed towards the battle sounds ahead. Upon arriving at the battlefield, he carefully observed from the shadows, activating his Byakugan. Tetsuro Sujiura and a Kanoha Genin stood back to back, surrounded by five Kumo Shinobis. Fallen bodies littered the ground, including one wearing a Kanoha forehead protector. Kanoha's forces had dwindled to Yudo Hyuga, Tetsuro Sujiura, and the Genin Satu Masato. Kumo had five remaining Shinobis. Yudo didn't immediately reveal himself. Instead, he stealthily circled around, closing in on the Kumo Jonin. Careful and silent, Yudo watched as both sides resumed their clash. Lightning release. Ground surge. The Kumo Jonin formed hand seals, pressing his hands to the ground. Silver lightning surged out, electrifying the surrounding area. Tetsuro and Sada jumped onto the trees to evade. Damn it. Yudo muttered from his hiding spot. Sure enough, the Kumo Shinobis charged at the Kanoha pair as they leapt. The Kumo Jonin engaged Tetsuro furiously, while the other four attacked Satu. The coordinated assault left Satu grievously injured within seconds. The plan was clear. Swiftly eliminate the weaker Kanoha Shinobi to focus all efforts on Tetsuro. Tetsuro gritted his teeth, unleashing all his chakra in desperate attacks but the experienced Kumo Jonin matched him blow for blow. Satu, outnumbered, was quickly overwhelmed. One Kumo Shinobi seized the moment, slashing Sata's left arm clean off with a precise strike. Sata's scream echoed through the forest, filled with terror. Tetsuro's expression darkened, helplessly watching his comrades suffer. The Kumo Jonin, sensing victory, allowed himself a moment of elation, slightly lowering his guard. A subtle whistling cut through the air, the sound of a kunai slicing through the atmosphere. In that split second Yudo's fierce chakra-infused fists struck the Kumo Jonin with deadly precision. Yudo had found his opening. Like the Kumo Shinobis, Yudo knew that eliminating the key opponent was crucial. If he could take down the Jonin, Kumo's forces would crumble. The moment Yudo launched his attack, Tetsuro Sujiura responded instantly. As a seasoned middle-aged jonin, it only took him a moment to understand Yudo's strategy. Ignore the surrounded Sadu and focus on eliminating the opposing jonin first. Sacrificing a pawn to save the king, it's all about who can defeat their opponent faster. 
In a flash, the Kumogakure's Jonin dodged the Kanai thrown by Yudo and, leveraging his natural adult arm span advantage, grabbed Yudo's elbow to halt his offensive. The Jonin of Kumogakure, adept in lightning release and taijutsu, posed a significant challenge in close combat for the 12-year-old Yudo. But the Hyuga prodigy showed no fear. Using the Kumo Jonin's arm as a pivot, he suspended himself and kicked both feet into the enemy's chest. A tremendous force erupted between them, and though Yudo's bones were not as strong as his opponent's, causing his joints to creak as if they might snap, he persisted. Earth Release Headhunter Jutsu Suddenly, hands emerged from the ground beneath the Kumo Jonin and yanked him underground, leaving only his upper body exposed. Bang! Tetsuro emerged from the ground, and after temporarily immobilizing the enemy, his kunai flashed coldly as it slashed towards the jonin's throat. With his lower body buried and arms entangled by Yudo, the jonin could only use brute force to fling Yudo away and raise his hands to block the kunai. Thud! His palms were pierced, and the kunai nailed his hand bones in place. Aarg! In a moment of crisis, the Kumogakure's Jonin's ferocity was ignited. His robust physique exploded with strength, and like a maddened beast, he tore the kunai from his hands and grabbed Tetsuro's waist with an outstretched arm. He lifted the Kanoha Jonin and channeled his remaining strength into his hands, which now emitted silver lightning arcs, and slammed Tetsuro into the ground with all his might. Nintaijutsu Lighting Style Liger Bomb Tetsuro's head hit the ground, creating a spiderweb of cracks through the forest floor and rock. Coughing up a mouthful of blood, Tetsuro nearly blacked out. Yet, as a jonin, even in severe injury, he managed a counterattack, quickly forming several seals. A thin, high-pressure stream of water shot from Tetsuro's mouth, moving at lightning speed, it pierced the enemy's abdomen, tearing through several trees before dissipating back into water. Water release. Water severing wave. This was Tetsuro's ace technique, his only A-rank jutsu. Kanoha's assault continued unabated. Yudo rushed in from behind, taking advantage of the enemy's critical injury to deliver a powerful punch to the back of his head. Chakra exploded with the Hyuga clan's signature gentle fist technique, pulverizing the opponent's brain. The Kumogakure's Jonin groaned and collapsed, dead on the spot. Yudo panted heavily, his sweat evaporating like steam. Tetsuro struggled to rise from the ground, spitting another mouthful of blood. Tetsuro-sama, Yudo stood beside him. I'll take the lead from here. Your neck could snap at any moment. All right, thank you, yudo Kuen. Tetsuro Sujiura smiled weakly, not arguing. They turned to face the remaining enemies. By then, Kanoha's genin Satu Masato's body had also fallen. Both sides had simultaneously eliminated the ones they were fighting. The remaining Kumogakure shinobis exchanged glances, bracing for the final confrontation. They knew that escape was pointless under the scrutiny of the Byakugan. Thirty minutes later, in the dense forest near the border of the Land of Fire, Yudo and Tetsuro walked side by side, staggering. Neither knew medical ninjutsu, so they had to endure the pain as they advanced. They had sustained additional injuries, even from Jenin's. A dying struggle couldn't be underestimated. However, the outcome was ultimately favorable. Yudo and Tetsuro had annihilated the Kumogakure forces, safeguarding the crucial information. You are truly remarkable, Yudo Kuen. Tetsuro Sujiura suddenly spoke. Battles always brought men closer. Initially, Tetsuro had used Yudo's full name, but now he addressed him more familiarly. Yudo Kuen, I've known of your reputation since our reconnaissance team was formed, Tetsuro mused. At just twelve, you've nearly touched the level of a jonin, earning the title Jewel of the Hyuga, with immense talent, hard work, intelligence, and a deep sense of honor for your village and family. Seeing you in action, I realize no praise is too high. Tetsuro Senpai, you flatter me, Yudo replied with a smile, now addressing Tetsuro by his given name. You bore the brunt of the enemy's force and the jonin. At the critical moment, 
you used an A-rank jutsu to heavily injure the enemy. Without you, we'd all be dead, but... The Hyuga prodigy's voice faltered. His steps slowed, clearly burdened by sorrow. Sadly, Masato, Rairo, Eiji, they're all gone, I... Tetsuro sighed but didn't stop to console him. For shinobis, accepting comrades' deaths was inevitable. A part of their job, no, their life. Yudokuen, look ahead. You've achieved a great feat, killing enemies, protecting the information. You truly deserve the title, Jewel of the Hyuga. Thank you, Tetsuro Senpai, Yudo replied. The information was indeed worth our sacrifices. I'm glad you understand, Tetsuro said, suddenly reaching into his pack and handing a scroll to Hyuga Yudo. It's fortunate you reminded me. I almost forgot. As protocol dictates, the lead jonin should carry the intelligence alternately. Though you aren't a jonin yet, I'm not in the best shape. We should share the responsibility. Making judgments based on the situation is also part of all shinobi's duty. Yes, Tetsuro Senpai. Yudo's calm, polite voice responded. Tetsuro felt the scroll's weight vanish from his hand, knowing Yudo had taken it. Almost immediately, Tetsuro felt a different sensation. Pain, excruciating pain. As a jonin, he instantly understood what had happened. A kunai had been stabbed into his back, severing the spinal cord between the fourth and fifth lumbar vertebrae. It's an enemy, but the enemy is already. Before he could comprehend, the young voice spoke again. Still calm, still steady. Tetsuro Senpai, why are you surprised? Yudo looked at the kunai, recognition flashing in his eyes as if he understood. In this situation, I wouldn't use my gentle fist technique. The young jewel of the Hyuga, his voice as calm as still water, reflecting his unwavering determination as a shinobi. This thought flashed through Tetsuro's mind. In the dense forest, Yudo gripped the handle of his kunai with both hands, the sharp iron blade piercing into Tetsuro Sujiura's body, severing his spine. Of course, he wouldn't use gentle fist. A shinobi's body contains a vast amount of information. When Tetsuro's corpse is returned to Konoha, it will undoubtedly be examined by experts in medical ninjutsu. Using gentle fist would be like engraving, I am the killer, on his forehead. Kunai is a tool used by shinobis worldwide. It can't be traced back to a specific type. As long as one is careful about the angle and strength of the stab, it's the perfect weapon to kill one's own people. The kunai was pulled out, bringing out a large amount of blood. Tetsuro groaned, raising his hand like lightning. However, Yudo used body flicker technique to appear in front of him, slashing the kunai mercilessly and severing his wrist. The Kanoha Jonin could no longer form seals. Yudo kicked fiercely, a harsh kick landing on Tetsuro's chest. After the sound of bones cracking, the Jonin flew back over ten meters until he crashed into a big tree. He fell to the ground in despair, his eyes unfocused. His spine was severed, his hands crippled, his chakra nearly depleted, and the traitor in front of him possessed the Byakugan. There was no way to escape. He would die from blood loss. Tetsuro Senpai, please don't move. Yudo exhaled lightly, speaking calmly. I don't intend to torture you. Please sit here and wait for your blood to drain. Believe me, this way of dying isn't very painful. His words were interrupted by Tetsuro's snort, Kanoha's scum, pretentious bastard. How could the Hyuga clan produce an animal like you? Yudo shook his head without expression. Tetsuro Senpai, if you want to provoke me into approaching you with words, this level won't do. You are a very talented shinobi. In the past ten days under your command, I've experienced this deeply. Before your blood dries up, I won't approach you rashly. It's too dangerous. Tetsuro's heart sank. The usage of the shortened sunbon hidden under his tongue became slightly hesitant due to his despair. Although his chakra was nearly exhausted, using senbons only required a trace of chakra, which was foolproof against an enemy who thought they had won. Unfortunately, the young traitor before him was too smart and cautious, revealing no flaws. No wonder, he's the jewel of the Hyuga. 
Tetsuro Sujiura thought bitterly. After a brief silence, Tetsuro carefully observed the young man with white eyes. Yudo Hyuga, do you want my body? Yes, Yudo nodded, rubbing the scroll. The reconnaissance squad was annihilated, but I brought back valuable information and survived alone. The enemy was wiped out, so there's no reason for me not to protect the body of my Jonin leader. If all your bodies were completely disposed of, it would be too suspicious. Aren't you afraid that people in the village will find something from my body? I'm afraid, and I know that certain forbidden techniques can ask answers from the dead souls. Yudo thought of the infamous, impure world reincarnation. But there's no way. Doing this always comes with risk. If I'm found out, I'll just die. Doing this. Tetsuro's face turned pale. The long-term blood loss made his consciousness begin to blur. Betraying the village, the clan, your comrades, you can do these things so lightly. He stated and paused, taking a while before continuing. Can you tell me, your reason? Yudo Hyuga calmly looked at him, slowly removing his forehead protector, revealing a blue-green curse mark. The Caged Bird All members of the Hyuga branch family have a curse mark called the Caged Bird, engraved on their foreheads in their childhood. From then on, until death, they can never escape. This curse mark can seal the Byakugan's ability and can completely destroy the eyes and brain if the marked person is killed or their eyes are removed. Moreover, the main family members can control and destroy the branch members' brain nerves and brain tissue through this curse mark. In the Hyuga clan, this is an ironclad hierarchy. It has been passed down for generations, a thousand-year-old tradition of the caged bird curse mark. Tetsuro Sujiura's eyes widened in disbelief. Just because of the caged bird? He breathed heavily, for the first time showing emotions of confusion and anger in his voice. Yudo Hyuga, for the sake of a mere curse mark, you're betraying the village and the clan? The caged bird indeed limits your freedom and abilities, but it's a tradition and rule of a powerful shinobi clan. And this curse mark successfully prevents others from stealing the Byakugan, protecting you all. Even as an outsider, I know that in the Hyuga clan, the main family are the true heirs, bearing the responsibility of protecting and promoting the Hyuga clan. The branch family is the guardian of the main family, responsible for protecting the Hyuga main family. With sacrifices, the clan becomes strong, the village prospers, and Kanoha flourishes. Yudo put on his forehead protector, covering the caged bird. He looked down at the dying Jonin, speaking softly. For some reason, I remember things early and matured early. I've been thinking about a question for a long time. Maybe I should just endure it? Kanoha is a good village. Though there are many dirty dealings, overall, it's quite positive. The Hyuga clan is strictly hierarchical, but at least it looks decent on the surface. Maybe I should just endure it? Work hard on missions, train diligently. After reaching a certain height, life should be okay. At worst, endure for another 30 or 40 years, and when the new era arrives, maybe everything will get better. I thought about it for a while and came to a conclusion. Yudo's expression suddenly lost its calmness and warmth, becoming somewhat erratic and helpless. No. I can't endure it. I can't tolerate being branded as a slave, serving as some people's guardian for life. I can't tolerate my descendants having this ugly caged bird on their foreheads. What I can't tolerate the most is my future self, living a repressed life, not daring to resist until death. The dying Tetsuro's expression was filled with confusion. Yudo Hyuga. What is he talking about? Can't tolerate it? What's so intolerable? For so many years. Why could other branch members endure it, but you can't? For the prosperity and strength of the Hyuga clan, shouldn't you abandon personal feelings and become the most solid shield of the main family? You're the jewel of the Hyuga. With incomprehension and doubt, the Jonin's heartbeat slowed down. Eventually, he died from blood loss, the lone standing Yudo Hyuga side softly, slowly walking towards Tetsuro Sujiura's body. You can't understand me, and I can't understand you. Ha, huh? 
The gap between people and me are as vast as the sky from the star. He squatted down, leaning close to the gradually cooling corp. But, let me tell you one last thing. To be honest, I really, really, really. The branch family boy bit his teeth tightly. The excessive anger made his mouth bleed, as if he wanted to chew his own skull to pieces. I really hate that title. Jewel of the Hyuga. One day later, Yudo Hyuga stopped running and slowly walked out of the forest. Ahead lay a vast plain with dense clusters of buildings. Behind the buildings, a massive rock face stood silently, carved with three gigantic faces. This was Kanoha, the shinobi village of the Land of Fire, one of the world's five great shinobi village. For much of history, Kanoha was the most powerful. Yudo calmly looked at the village gate and walked towards it. The Chunin on duty at the gate saw him and nodded slightly in greeting. The Land of Fire and Kanoha always had a large population, but the village wasn't very big. Even if you didn't know everyone, you'd recognize faces after a while. Moreover, over the past year, the name Jewel of the Hyuga had gained some influence. Yudo's exceptional appearance made him memorable. Kanoha's buildings had a traditional charm. Though there weren't many tall buildings, the village wasn't backward. Electricity was common, and the roads were wide. The large trees with lush foliage broke the sunlight into pieces, casting dappled patterns on people. The smell of food from street shops filled the air, giving the place a lively atmosphere. Despite all biases, even Yudo admitted that Kanoha was full of life. In his previous life, reading manga or watching TV, he had a good impression of Kanoha. He had imagined that if he ever transmigrated, he would stand on the side of justice in the Fourth Shinobi World War, watching Naruto Uzumaki and Sasuke Uchiha battle Madara. Those who break the rules are scum, but those who abandon their friends are worse than scum. This line had once made his blood boil, leading him to faithfully follow the manga and accompany the blonde underdog. But things were different when he was truly reborn as a baby in the Naruto world. Who in their right mind would brand a caged bird on the forehead of their comrades? Yudo sighed silently and continued walking through the street. As a Chunin returning from a mission where all but himself had perished, the proper procedure was to report to the Hokage's office immediately, detailing the mission and handing over the valuable intelligence he had obtained. But Yudo knew he couldn't do that. He was Yudo Hyuga, the jewel of the Hyuga, a genius of the branch family, indoctrinated from a young age to serve the main family. His first action upon returning to the village should be to report to the clan leader. Every action must align with his identity, concealing his true intentions. With these thoughts, Yudo quickly arrived at the Hyuga clan's compound. Unlike the Uchiha, the Hyuga clan occupied a large area near the village center. Even with ordinary eyesight, one could easily see the Hokage's office from the compound's entrance. Yudo didn't enter through the main gate but signaled the guards and entered through a hidden path, heading straight for the deepest part of the compound. Living in the Naruto world for 12 years, Yudo understood that the world wasn't as bright and sunny as the manga portrayed. There were many dirty deeds to be wary of. During this period, both the Hyuga and Uchiha clans held significant power in Kanoha and enjoyed many privileges. Even returning to the clan compound immediately upon returning to the village was an overreach that the third Hokage, Hiruzen Saratobi, would tolerate as long as it wasn't too blatant. If Yudo had brazenly walked into the village and directly entered the clan compound, it would have been a direct slap in the face. It would either be seen as a child's homesickness or as the Hyuga clan's disregard for the Hokage's authority. Sneaking into the compound was a way to save reputation for everyone. Soon, Yudo arrived outside a courtyard and knelt on one knee, looking down at his toes. Yotokun, come in. A voice from inside invited him, and Yudo respectfully responded and bowed before slowly entering the house. Inside, a young shinobi in a spacious kimono sat quietly in the center. His long hair and white eyes, combined with his calm demeanor, exuded an air of authority. 
He wore no forehead protector, and his forehead was unmarked. Clan leader, Yudo said respectfully, kneeling on one knee. The young man before him was the recently appointed head of the Hyuga main family, Hayashi Hyuga. Yudo Kuen, Hayashi said with a slight smile. How did your mission go? Clan leader, there were complications, but I obtained the intelligence from Kumogakure. Complications? Yes, Tetsuro Sujiura, and Jenin Sato Masato, Rairo Yamagata, and Eiji Hirahara all perished. Hayashi's brow furrowed slightly. Even Tetsuro Sujiura, the young clan leader sighed and was silent for a moment before speaking again. The world is dangerous. I'm glad you made it back alive. It's all thanks to the clan's teachings, Yudo replied flawlessly. Hayashi pondered for a moment before continuing. Your reconnaissance squad accomplished much, but with everyone else dead, the credit will fall to you alone. The Hokage is fair and will reward you. Have you thought about what you want? I will follow the clan leader's arrangement. Well said, Hayashi snorted. Even I can't change the Hokage's decision, understand? Yes, I understand. You may leave. If the Hokage wants to reward you immediately, you can delay it. Positions in the Umbu, Barrier Team, or the Hokage's office, or a direct promotion to Jonin would all be beneficial to the clan. Only considering the Hyuga clan, without a thought for me? Yudo thought coldly but maintained his respectful demeanor as he left. Unexpectedly, just as he was about to leave, Hayashi spoke again. Lumiko, Yoshihiko, and Kengo are all almost three years old. They will have their ceremony this week. As one of our outstanding members, I permit you to serve as a guard for the event. It is an honor. I'm honored, clan leader. Ah. Uh, branding three-year-olds with the caged bird seal, turning them into slaves. And witnessing this cruel ceremony is a privilege for an older slave like me. Yudo bit his tongue to keep his expression steady as he left Hayashi's courtyard and exited the compound. Outside, he took a deep breath, suppressing all his emotions. He knew his difficult task had only just begun. Killing Tetsuro Sujiura and claiming all the credit was a risky move, all for the actions he would take next. Yudo looked up at the distant Hokage's office standing tall. For the shinobis of the village, meeting the Hokage is not particularly difficult. Especially for someone like Yudo Hyuga, who has just completed a mission and returned to the village, reporting to the leader is a routine matter. After being led into the Hokage's office by an umbu wearing a dog-faced mask, Yudo kneeled on one knee and respectfully said, Greetings, Hokage-sama. In the room, the 50-year-old Haruzen Saratobi slowly turned around. He wore the Hokage's robe, held a pipe, and his hair was already white. He didn't look like a leader of a village. Rather, he resembled a thin and short neighborly uncle. But Yudo knew that at this age, Hiruzen Saratobi, as a shinobi, was at the tail end of his peak with immense power. He was undoubtedly Kanoha's strongest force at this time. Sixteen years later, during Orochimaru's attack on the village, Hiruzen's body had already deteriorated. Even if he hadn't used the Reaper Death Seal, he wouldn't have lived for many days after the battle. As the Hokage, Hiruzen was not only powerful but also far wiser and more skillful than most. During his tenure, strong shinobi clans had consistently subdued and obeyed the will of this shadow, while geniuses continually emerged in Kanoha, leading to a prosperous village. Praising him as a hero is not flattery. Yudo, stand up. No need to kneel, Hiruzen said exhaling a ring of smoke and looking at the young man standing up. The barrier squad reported that they only detected your chakra. My deepest apologies, Hokage-sama, Yudo said, his handsome face showing evident pain. Tetsuro Sujiura, Satu Masato, Rairo Yamagata, and Eiji Hirahara all perished. The special assault reconnaissance team is down to just me. So, Tetsuro Kuen is also gone. Hiruzen Saratobi sighed softly. Yes, Tetsuro Senpai was surrounded and couldn't escape. Hokage-sama, this is the scroll. Yudo handed over the cylinder. 
Hiruzen Saratobi took it, gently tapped it a few times to break the seal with a special secret sign, and then carefully read it. Throughout the process, Yudo kept his head down. He didn't peek and even his fingers didn't move. Estimating that Hiruzen had almost finished reading, Yudo began his well-rehearsed mission report, which he had mentally prepared dozens of times. The first half of the mission went smoothly. We reached the land of hot water and retrieved the intelligence from the agreed-upon cave, but we encountered problems on the way back. In the land of hot water, we were ambushed by Kumo Shinobi, and continuous attackers followed us as we moved toward the fire country border, defending ourselves as we went. We didn't expect an enemy Jonin to appear. What Yudo said was 99% true. Except for the crucial part where he ambushed Tetsuro Sujiura, he hid nothing, even detailing the locations where the Kanoha Shinobi died. After this, the Umbu would clean up, and according to Yudo's description, they would retrieve the bodies of the fallen shinobi and conduct autopsies, reconstructing the events of that day based on their experience. This is the rule and procedural justice. Every shinobi village has similar tracking systems and can't simply trust the words of subordinates. After Yudo finished speaking, seeing that Hiruzen remained silent, he obediently stood still. Throughout, his gaze remained fixed on his toes. After you leave here, go to the Umbu to assist in the investigation, Hiruzen suddenly said. As a jonin, Tetsuro Sujiura's death must be recorded independently without any errors. Yes, Hokage-sama, I understand. I will cooperate with the Umbu. Good. As expected of the jewel of the Hyuga, Yutokun. Though you are young, you handle matters with the maturity of an adult. Hiruzen Saratobi smiled and handed the scroll to Yudo Hyuga. Take a look. As a learned member of the Hyuga clan, you should understand. The handsome boy nodded, understanding the value of this intelligence after just a few glances. The price of grain in the Land of Lightning is continuously rising. Are they preparing for war? Yes, the war-hungry Kumo Shinobi are about to stir up trouble again. Victory will belong to Kanoha. Yudo said respectfully, chanting the slogan loudly. Hiruzen chuckled. He wouldn't discuss such matters of national war with a twelve-year-old Hyuga branch member. He merely used this intelligence to lead into the topic. The value of this scroll is significant, not only exposing Kumogakure's war intentions but also revealing a few supply lines. Kumogakure will have a headache now, knowing we are aware of the locations, they will need time and effort to re-establish supply routes. Not only that, you killed several enemy shinobi during the mission, including a jonin. Including Tetsuro Kuen, all members of the team except you are dead. Kanoha will deliver their pensions to their families, but the credit will all fall on you. Since becoming a genin, you have completed 92 missions, five of which were high-risk A-rank missions, all perfectly accomplished. With this mission, well, you have accumulated significant merit. Go to the Umbu, Yudo Hyuga. I will give you special permission to enter. One of the Umbu captains under my command is aging. You still have time to grow. If it were an ordinary Kanoha Shinobi, they would undoubtedly be overwhelmed with excitement. The Umbu is the Hokage's personal army, and all the captains are Hiruzen Saratobi's confidants. Climbing to the captain's position would mean leaping into Kanoha's middle and upper echelons. However, Yudo merely kept his head down and responded without hesitation, I apologize, Hokage-sama. I haven't thought thoroughly about the reward yet. May I have a few days to consider? Hiruzen didn't respond immediately. He exhaled a puff of smoke, filling the room with the spicy and peculiar scent of white smoke. The fifty-year-old Hiruzen felt a surge of displeasure. Are the rules of the Hyuga clan more significant than those of the village? As the Hokage of Kanoha, he naturally knew that upon returning to the village, Yudo Hyuga first went to the Hyuga clan's grounds. Although discreet, this small act did not escape him. Did Hayashi Hyuga instruct you to respond this way? Stalling for time to seek a reward that best benefits the Hyuga clan, Hiruzen sighed inwardly. 
the village's interests and authority must override all shinobi clans, including the Hyuga and Uchiha. The journey is still long. Nonetheless, as the professor, Hiruzen Saratobi did not lose his composure. He was not so petty as to take out his frustration on a 12-year-old Hyuga branch child. All right, you can take your time, Hiruzen said calmly. But, Yudo Kuen, you must give me an idea of what kind of reward you want. Upon hearing this, Yudo's heart tightened. Here it is. Finally, the moment he had been waiting for. There was no need to give a grandiose reply or express any resentment towards the Hyuga clan or the caged bird seal. In his response, he only needed to show a hint of a certain quality. Based on his identity, Hiruzen Saratobi would certainly make a big deal out of it, allowing Yudo to proceed with his next step. Emotions, actions, words, everything had to be adjusted perfectly. In the quiet Hokage's office, Yudo Hyuga remained silent for a moment. Then, he looked up for the first time, revealing his snow-white eyes. With a gentle, firm voice, tinged with a bit of the unique shyness and hesitation of a young boy, he said, Hokage-sama, I was thinking, if the reward you give me could make everyone in the village happy, that would be wonderful. Saratobi Hiruzen's hand paused for a moment. With his strong will, even if he is engulfed in flames, he wouldn't frown, but now, in the Hokage's office, a single sentence from a twelve-year-old branch family member of the Hyuga clan left him stunned. If it could make everyone in the village happy, that would be wonderful. No demand for more power. No craving for higher status. Not even a mention of the Hyuga family. To make everyone in the village happy. Yudo Hyuga, in your subconscious, is the importance of the village above all else? The Hyuga clan's teachings certainly wouldn't instill such a thought. Was this sentence specifically crafted for me? Or is it genuinely heartfelt, beyond even your awareness? For the first time, Hiruzen earnestly looked at the twelve-year-old branch family member in front of him. Very young, with thick calluses on his hands, indicating hard work. The Hyuga's jewel, right, since becoming a genin, you have rarely been in the Hyuga clan's territory, spending most of your time on missions. You were only six when you were promoted to Genin, so you haven't had much time for clan education. He suddenly thought of the genius who fought and died for Kanoha, Kagami Uchiha. Even in the closed, proud, and powerful shinobi clans, there are those who inherit the will of fire. Hiruzen thought of many things, but finally, he suppressed all these thoughts, looking deeply at Yudo Hyuga. Yudo Kuen, you may leave now. Have a good rest. Yes, Hokage-sama. Yudo bowed and exited. He made no unnecessary moves and left the Hokage building in high spirit. He had done all he could. What would happen next, Yudo couldn't foresee. A highly talented Hyuga branch member with the will of fire. How would Hiruzen handle this? If it were sixteen years later, with the canon officially beginning and the elderly third Hokage nearing his end, he would likely remain passive, at most providing some secret assistance. But now, the fifty-something third Hokage, a man full of ambition and daring enough to make bold moves and drastic decisions, stood in his place. Hiruzen Saratobi. Don't let me down. Yudo thought this as he headed directly back to the Hyuga clan's territory, in keeping with his usual behavior. This time, he could enter through the front gate. The Hyuga clan's grounds were extensive. The central area belonged to the main family, while the surrounding areas were occupied by numerous branch families. The difference in location and elevation of these areas clearly conveyed the deep-rooted belief that the main family is the master of the Hyuga, and the branch family must protect and serve the main family. A thousand-year-old tradition, the concept of hierarchy, was as deeply ingrained as blood in every member of the Hyuga clan. The main family saw this as natural law. The branch family did too. Over the long years, any seeds of rebellion had long been eradicated. Yudo's home was in the southwestern part of the clan grounds, about 400 meters from the tall walls, at the outskirts of the Hyuga clan's area. But thankfully, his home was quite spacious. 
Though not filled with valuables, his parents had enjoyed gardening, making the yard pleasant, reminiscent of a flower garden. He walked through the yard and entered the house, beginning to clean and tidy up. Yudo had been away for 18 days, and a layer of dust had settled on the tatami mat. Cleaning was a tough job, but Yudo enjoyed it. As a shinobi, he could use chakra to walk on walls, so no corner was left untouched. He cleared away cobwebs, dust, and insect. By the time the entire house was spotless, the sun was setting. Yudo lay on the grassy-smelling tatami mats, removed his forehead protector, and touched his smooth forehead. He knew the hideous caged bird seal was there, painless but ever-present, like a spider spinning silk. Feeling disgusted by the thought, he shivered, got up, and went to the kitchen to cook. A twelve-year-old boy, even a shinobi, would struggle to make delicious food. Skilled with kunai and chakra control, he still couldn't master cooking techniques, often fumbling with kitchen tools. Fortunately, he only needed to prepare a small amount of food. After much effort, he finally made a dish of fried fish, a plate of vegetables, and a bowl of rice. The fish was slightly burnt, the vegetables overly salty, and the rice partially uncooked. Despite this, Yudo ate happily. No one in Kanoha knew that when Yudo was alone, he was quite cheerful. Born into the Hyuga branch family, destined to be a slave from birth, if he were always gloomy, he would have long since succumbed to despair. As he ate, Yudo suddenly felt lonely. He quickly got up, ran upstairs to a room, and retrieved two kunai from a box. The kunai still had dried blood on them. These were among the few personal belongings left by Yudo's parent. Nine years ago, when he was three, that year, as a reincarnated soul, Yudo was a carefree child, full of hope despite being a Hyuga branch member. He knew the future development of this world, with the child of prophecy, Naruto Uzumaki, everything would be fine, with happiness ahead. Until one day, his parents, as protectors, were brought back to the clan grounds, covered in blood. A significant main family member was attacked, and his parents fought desperately, nearly dying to protect them. Out of gratitude or fear of the change, Yudo clung to his dying parents, determined to witness their fate. But in the end, he didn't see them die. He was taken away with force, whips, and rules. On the day his branch family parents died for the main family, their son received the caged bird seal. The reward for the dead heroes was to mark their offspring as slaves. The date for the seal had been set, unchangeable under any circumstances, a rule the Hyuga clan took pride in for a thousand years. When three-year-old Yudo, clutching his forehead, stumbled towards his parents, he found only two cold bodies. He saw their lifeless faces and noticed their mouths slightly open, as if speaking. After much thought, comparing mouth shapes and asking those present, Yudo Hyuga finally understood his parents' last words. Yudo, we're sorry. Sorry, sorry for what? At this moment, in his lonely, cold home, Yudo Hyuga held the blood-stained, rusted kunai and murmured, There's nothing to apologize for. You did nothing wrong. Father, mother. The next day, the sun rose as usual. Yudo woke up early. For young shinobi of his age, who had just returned from a mission, a few days of rest to enjoy the peaceful days in Kanoha was customary. But Yudo had already been up before dawn. After a simple wash and packing a small bag of dry food, he left the clan grounds alone and headed to the dense forest on the outskirts of the village. He walked a familiar path to his secret training spot, an open area surrounded by dozens of tall trees. The clearing was small and quite secluded. Upon closer inspection, one would find the ground extremely hard, almost like rock. Yudo retrieved a box from under one of the big trees, taking out the items inside. Heavy wristbands and armor plates, a specially made dummy marked with acupoints and chakra pathway diagrams, sealed drinking water, emergency bandages, and hemostatic medicine. He put on the heavy gear, bound each finger with metal blocks, took a few deep breaths, and began training in the forest. Stepping, punching, and activating his Byakugan, 
Every move in his gentle fist was executed meticulously. The coordination of chakra and physical actions was a major discipline. During training, if his strikes were even slightly off target, even by a millimeter, Yudo would punish himself by repeating the action a hundred times. Over the years, the once soft soil of this narrow forest area had been trampled as hard as rock by him. How did a Hyuga branch family orphan earn the title of the Jewel of the Hyuga? The answer was simple, perseverance. Each drop of sweat and every punch pushed him closer to becoming stronger. A foolish method was still a method. However, despite his efforts, Yudo could clearly feel his progress slowing down recently. In his secret training ground, Yudo suddenly leaped up, darting like a bird towards the dummy. His hands moved so fast they almost turned into a blur, striking 16 key points on the dummy's chest and abdomen like lightning. After landing, he checked the dummy and silently sighed. Only three of the 16 strikes had fully penetrated the thick armor of the dummy. His finger strength and hand force were still not piercing or fierce enough. The so-called gentle fist was based on the Byakugan, utilizing direct attack techniques with the body and chakra. In essence, it was a hereditary Kekiai Genkai Taijutsu. Taijutsu training was a crucial part of this. Yudo Hyuga was certain that none of his peers in the village worked harder than he did. No child would forsake all fun and food to run into the forest for suffering. Despite his hard work, he hadn't made significant progress in a long time. His body's talent had been fully tapped. Yudo's physical condition was good, his chakra capacity was decent, and he was a genius, but only an average genius. As time passed and his body matured, Yudo was sure he would become a jonin, but going beyond that would be extremely difficult. With the branch family's sealed Byakugan, limited abilities, and inherent blind spots, Yudo couldn't surpass the level of Jonin. For the rest of his life, he wouldn't even see the heels of a Kaga-level shinobi. A transmigrator's sweat and effort shortened the time it took to grow from Jonin to Jonin, but absolute talent limited his potential for further advancement. Unless, he acquired other powerful shinobi techniques, breaking free from the limitations of the Byakugan and Gentle Fist. Flying Thunder God, Sage Mode, Impure World Reincarnation, would release. These famous techniques or Kekiai Genkai were Yudo's only hope to surpass his limit. Otherwise, relying solely on the Byakugan and Gentle Fist, revenge would be a hopeless dream for his entire life. Even among the Hyuga main family, with an unsealed Byakugan and complete Gentle Fist techniques, no other Kaga-level powerhouse had appeared except for the legendary Ryasuki Hyuga. Don't rush, take it slowly. Yudo muttered to himself as he completed today's heavy training task. After finishing all his training, eating all his dry food, and cleaning up the secret training ground, it was already evening. Yudo changed into clean clothes and returned along the same path. His life had become very simple after becoming a genin. Either he went out on missions or came to the training ground to practice, maintaining a very regular routine. As a result, he had very few friends and not many people to talk to. So, in the eyes of others, although the jewel of the Hyuga was gentle and kind, he also had the aloofness of a genius and wasn't very easy to get along with. On his way back to the village, Yudo didn't feel lonely. Farmers were returning from their fields, and low-level shinobi were coming back from missions. Despite the increasing tensions among the great nations, Kanoha village was peaceful and serene. People were chatting and laughing, and those who recognized Yudo greeted him. Of course, as the Third Shinobi World War approached, even Kanoha would eventually be enveloped in a somber and tense atmosphere. After entering the village, Yudo headed towards the clan grounds. However, he didn't expect to see a famous trio from the manga in his line of sight along the way. Abido, you're late again. A pretty girl with purple cheek marks and large eyes scolded a boy running towards her from a takoyaki stand by the street. Rin, I'm sorry, I was wrong. The boy with sunglasses and a sunny smile scratched the back of his head, sweating profusely as he apologized. 
I was helping an old lady cross the street. That shouldn't make you 30 minutes late. And then I helped the tofu seller fetch water and bandaged an injured kitten. I felt so bad for them. You. You. Rin's eyes widened. Seeing Abito's miserable look, she felt like scolding him but couldn't bear to, so she turned to her handsome white-haired companion. Every time I wait for you, from now on you can go out on your own. Eh? Don't be like that, Rin. Abito shouted. We're a team that goes through life and death together. The tightest team in Kanoha. Not a single one of us can be missing. Right, Kakashi? Hmm. Kakashi looked up, puzzled. Rin, was there a fly buzzing around in front of me just now? Aya, Kakashi, you jerk, stop pretending. Kakashi dodged Abito's neck hug and saw Yudo on the street. He nodded slightly at Yudo, a greeting of sorts. Yudo was a year older than Kakashi. The two were quite familiar with each other from being called out by teachers to demonstrate taijutsu at the academy. Yudo smiled warmly and greeted them. They were classmates after all, not strangers. Jo, Yudo, you work so hard. Come try these takoyaki. In the orange twilight, Abito's voice was full of vitality, like the passionate, blazing sun. Yudo had no idea that while he was leisurely returning to clan's territory, a meeting concerning his fate was quietly beginning. A highly detailed analysis report lay before Hiruzen Sarutobi. The autopsy reports of Tetsuro Sujiura, Masato Satu, Rairo Yamagata, and Eiji Hirahara had been submitted by the medical team of Shinobi. There were no suspicious points, except for Tetsuro Sujiura's fatal wound, a penetrating injury located between the fourth and fifth lumbar vertebrae, inflicted from behind with a kanai. For Kumo Shinobi skilled in lightning release taijutsu, their fingers were the sharpest blades. Hence, the report concluded, I can't understand why the final battle ended in close combat. Hiruzen merely glanced at it and dismissed this point. As a battle-hardened Hokage, Hiruzen Saratobi had lived through countless battles, understanding well that Shinobi, in the end, fought like wild beasts tearing at each other. He had witnessed two powerful jonin, when their strength waned, desperately stabbing each other with frozen fish. With the recovery of Kanoha's fallen shinobi completed, Hiruzen didn't question the report of the sole survivor. Thus, the achievements of the reconnaissance squad, obtaining important intelligence and killing multiple enemy shinobi, were all attributed to Yudo Hyuga. Including previous merits, this branch family genius had accumulated significant achievements. Hiruzen closed his eyes, involuntarily recalling Yudo's words in this very office the previous day. The door creaked open, and three people entered in a single line. Hiruzen wasn't bothered by the intrusion and softly said, Danzo, Hamira, Koharu, you're here. Yudo-sen. The three stood before his desk. In private, they addressed each other by name, not by titles. Every week, in this Hokage office, Hiruzen Saratobi, Danzo Shimura, Hamura Mitokado, and Koharu Yudatane held secret meetings. No Yenbiyu recorded the discussions, no clan heads were present, and even Hiruzen's proud pupils, the three legendary Sanin, were absent. Many covert plots and decisions impacting the entire fire country took shape during these meetings. Hiruzen, Danzo began with a scar on his jaw and bandages over his right eye and forehead, making him unapproachable even when silent. Strike first. Let Namikaze infiltrate Kumogakure and attack the Eight Tails Jinchuriki. We'll prepare a portable jutsu that might break the sealing technique and release the Eight Tails. Releasing the Eight Tails in the heart of Kumogakure was extreme, even in the shinobi world, as it would endanger numerous civilians. Given the Eight Tails' destructive power, casualties in the Land of Lightning would surely be in the six figures. Hiruzen frowned. With no outsiders present, he didn't need to maintain his noble image and seriously considered the plan's feasibility. The Eight Tails' Jinchuriki has a high compatibility with the beast. A standard plan might not work. Then let Minato take an Uchiha with him. With the Sharingan and that forbidden Jutsu, 
the success rate of releasing the Eight Tails exceeds 40%. Danzo, do you want the world to know Kanoha did this? Even if successful, other major nations will unite against us. Then let's fight. Danzo was unfazed. By then, Kumogakure will be severely weakened. Iwagakure's only notable threat is that old Anoki. As for Sunagakure and Kirigakure? Mere weaklings. Hiruzen pondered for a while but ultimately shook his head. Too risky? Facing four enemies at once. As Hokage, I can't risk the entire village. Humph. Danzo snorted but, hearing Hiruzen refer to himself as Hokage, knew he had decided and refrained from further argument. At this moment, the silent Koharu spoke, but war is imminent. Kumogakure is becoming restless, Iwagakure's attacks are increasing, and the other two strong villages are preparing for battle. If war erupts, it won't be minor skirmishes. I believe the Third Shinobi World War will occur within two years. I understand. Hiruzen said calmly, exhaling a smoke ring. Today, I mainly want to discuss this. If war engulfs the world and all five great shinobi villages participate, we can't rely on conventional forces. He paused, then continued. We must draw more power from the Uchiha and Hyuga clans. The Sharingan and Byakugan have significant battlefield impact. We need these two dojitsus. Hamura nodded in agreement. Good idea, Hiruzen. Previously, the Uchiha and Hyuga clans helped but kept their core forces hidden, which sufficed for minor border conflicts. However, if the Third Shinobi World War breaks out, we need their full cooperation. But greater participation means greater casualties. Danzo sneered, his teeth seemingly bloodstained. If they refuse, we could use this opportunity to... Danzo, Hiruzen shook his head. We're one village. To me, both the Hyuga and Uchiha are brothers and essential parts of Kanoha. There's no need to go that far. Oh? Then what do you propose? We can give them a hint. Hiruzen squinted, sharing his idea. Hint that the position of the next or subsequent Hokage will prioritize the Hyuga and Uchiha. Danzo, Hamura, Koharu, don't rush. I know. It's not suitable for powerful clans like the Hyuga and Uchiha to hold the Hokage position. Thus, it's just a hint. A hint is merely an empty promise. Like blindfolding a donkey with a carrot in front of it. It can smell the carrot, works hard, but never gets to eat it. The other three were silent, understanding the Uchiha and Hyuga clan's desire for the Hokage position. Using this to motivate them was indeed a brilliant strategy. The key was how subtle the hint was. They must genuinely feel the Hokage position is attainable, while making it easy to evade fulfilling this promise post-war. No substantial commitment, yet enough to motivate. Hiruzen didn't keep them in suspense. My three students, one from the Senja clan and others, two civilians. Their students also lack Uchiha and Hyuga members, which sends a poor signal implying these clans will not be central to Kanoha's core or the Hokage role for a long time. I'm old, lacking the energy to train new students. So, I'll have my students select a successor from a major clan, signaling I'm not opposed to the Hyuga or Uchiha, even considering them for Kanoha's leadership. As time passed, Yudo had already been in the village for six days. During this period, everything was calm. Yudo moved between the clan grounds and a secret training field, diligently yet monotonously. Sometimes, he would encounter characters who appeared frequently in the original story. Notably, yesterday, he happened to see a heavily pregnant Mikoto Uchiha. By the end of this year, Itachi would be born into the Uchiha family, bringing unprecedented pain to this ancient, illustrious shinobi clan. This made Yudo somewhat anxious. Although there were still 16 years before the official start of the Naruto storyline, with the main characters gradually appearing, he felt that time was running short. However, no matter how anxious he was, he could only force himself to calm down and continue his training. On this particular day, Yudo got up early as usual. After tidying up his clothes and preparing to head to the secret training field, 
He was stopped by two clan guards as soon as he stepped out of his yard. Yudo Hyuga, said the Hyuga clansman wearing a forehead protector, his tone as flat as a robot. The clan head has instructed me to inform you that there will be a banquet tonight, and you are to attend with the clan head. Banquet? Yudo Hyuga's heart skipped a beat. Could you tell me more about it, brother? I've delivered the message. That's all I know. Oh, is the clan head available now? I'd like to. The clan head is busy. The messenger's eyelids didn't even flicker as he replied, precisely following his instructions. Don't go anywhere today, Yudo Hyuga, and make sure you don't act improperly tonight. Yudo pondered over these words, then bowed respectfully. Thank you, brother. After the messenger left, Yudo stood alone in the courtyard, his heart racing. He had a hunch that this might be related to the conversation he had with Haruzen a few days ago. The day passed quickly, and as night fell, a carriage stopped in front of Yudo's house. He boarded the carriage and joined the clan head and others at the gate, before leaving the Hyuga territory in a grand procession. Soon, they arrived at their destination. As Yudo got off the carriage, the first thing he saw was a peculiar emblem composed of three lines and five small circles. This was the Saratobi clan's crest. They were at the Saratobi clan's compound. Following the attendants, the Hyuga clan entered the main residence. Since Haruzen Saratobi was inaugurated as the third Hokage, the Saratobi clan's territory had been expanded multiple times. The main residence, in particular, had been transformed into a formidable banquet hall where Haruzen often hosted prominent figures of the village. It barely qualified as a family gathering, lacking the absolute hierarchy of the Hokage's office. In the main hall, Hiruzen sat in the central seat, with several long tables to his right, all empty. To his left sat about a dozen people, all with handsome features and dark, pure eyes. Their bearing was marked by an accumulated pride, slightly restrained even in the presence of the third Hokage. They were from the Uchiha clan. Hayashi, don't just stand there, Hiruzen chuckled. Hayashi Hyuga bowed before taking a seat, followed by the rest of the Hyuga clan. Thus, the three most powerful factions of Kanoha, Hiruzen's lineage, the Uchiha and the Hyuga, were gathered together. With all the guests present, servants began to serve dishes, and the banquet officially commenced. Yudo took a bite of sashimi, observing the attendees. On the Hyuga side, besides the clan head Hayashi Hyuga, his brother Hizashi Hyuga was also present, along with three elderly clan members and four young shinobi, including Yudo. Among them, Yudo and another white-eyed boy were from the branch family, while the remaining boy and the only girl were from the main family. The distinction between the Hyuga main and branch families was easy to spot. Those who didn't wear forehead protectors or bandages to cover their foreheads were from the main family, which seemed to be a privilege worth flaunting. The Uchiha side had a similar setup. Clan head Fugaku Uchiha, his wife Mikoto Uchiha, several elders, and four young shinobi. As for the host of the banquet, Hiruzen Saratobi, three people sat beside him. One had long white hair with red markings under his eyes, and a tall, muscular frame. Despite his lazy demeanor, his broad shoulders gave an impression of reliability, as if he could bear any burden. Another had pale skin and golden, serpentine eyes. Although handsome, he exuded an aura of fear. Despite his intimidating presence, he had a peculiar allure, dangerous yet compelling. The last one was a woman with flowing blonde hair, an extraordinarily beautiful face, and a diamond-shaped purple mark on her forehead. She sat there boldly, gulping down alcohol, her demeanor as imposing as any man's. These three were Haruzen's esteemed disciples, Kanoha's legendary Sanin, Jiraiya, Orochimaru, and Tsunade. At this time, only Orochimaru was stationed in Kanoha holding a significant position. Jiraiya traveled the world writing novels, while Tsunade, suffering from hemophobia, had distanced herself from Kanoha's political center, wandering with the young Shizun, always losing at gambling. 
Hiruzen must have put in considerable effort to gather all three of his disciples. So many important people. Yudo thought as he ate slowly, knowing this banquet couldn't be just about food, and thus refrained from eating too much. Amidst the clinking of glasses, the atmosphere was harmonious. Though young, both Fugaku and Hayashi were shrewd individuals, while Hiruzen was a seasoned tactician whose words were flawless. After chatting for a few dozen minutes, Hiruzen finally tapped the table lightly and smiled at the Uchiha side. Fugaku, the child to your left, is he you swift blade, Shudo? Yes, that's him, Fugaku replied humbly. This boy is my nephew. He loves using swords and has gained some notoriety outside the village. Shudo. Greetings, Lord Hokage. Shudo Uchiha stepped forward from the table, kneeling on one knee. His voice was strong, full of youthful energy and pride. Good child, Hiruzen smiled, stroking his beard. Hayashi, the one behind you must be Shino Sokyuga, correct? I've heard he mastered the eight trigrams palms revolving heaven at a young age, quite the prodigy. Shino Sokyuga stood and bowed, his forehead smooth and unmarked. Hiruzen seemed very pleased. Looking at the eight young Uchiha and Hyuga Shinobi, he laughed heartily. When I was young, following the second Hokage, the world was in turmoil. My classmates and I would often engage in friendly battles of ninjutsu and taijutsu, finding great joy in it. Today, with my three disciples here, and Fugaku and Hayashi too, drinking with an old man like me must be dull. How about letting these youngsters spar a bit? Under the table, Hayashi Hyuga's hand clenched tightly. Three days ago, a certain captain from the ENBU suddenly appeared in the Hyuga clan's territory and left him a message. One of the Sanin will reopen their dojo and select suitable individuals from the Hyuga and Uchiha clans as disciples. In three days, bring four promising young Hyuga under 14 years old to the Saratobi clan's grounds. Only the heavens knew how excited Hayashi was upon hearing this. Hiruzen Saratobi, being over 50 years old, was soon approaching the end of his prime as a shinobi. Unlike the Uzumaki or Senju clans who possessed strong vitality, his energy would decline, and he would eventually have to relinquish the position of Hokage. Currently, the highest contenders for the fourth Hokage in Kanoha were Jiraiya, Orochimaru, and Tsunade of the Sanin. Being chosen as a disciple by one of the Sanin meant that the bloodline of either the Uchiha or Hyuga would enter the core of Kanoha's shinobi hierarchy. This meant that, with proper maneuvering, members of both clans could potentially sit on the Hokage seat in the future. Although one of Jiraiya's disciples, Minato Namikaze, had a Uchiha student, no one in Kanoha saw Minato as a serious candidate for the next Hokage. He was too young, and despite his strength, he lacked his own base of support. In this sense, Abito Uchiha was merely an add-on and wasn't regarded as a legitimate part of the shinobi lineage. Yet, before Hayashi could ponder further, the ENBU captain added, The following isn't an order, but a personal request from the Hokage. He said the information Yudo Hyuga desperately brought back was very useful. Give the young man a chance and bring him along. After saying this, the ENBU captain left leaving Hayashi in a whirlwind of thoughts. What? The Hokage wants me to bring Yudo? Why would the shinobi hierarchy consider someone from the branch family? How could the leader of the village have a caged bird above him? Is this the Hokage's dissatisfaction with our clan's branch system? But the founding rules of the village dictate non-interference in clan affairs. He thought a lot but couldn't decipher it. Though he felt a strong urge to summon Yudo for questioning, he refrained out of respect for the third Hokage. Now, at the banquet, Hayashi Hyuga and Fugaku Uchiha exchanged glances briefly before quickly averting their eyes. No matter what, this opportunity must be seized by my Hyuga, Uchiha clan. All right. Jiraiya enthusiastically supported his teacher. As shinobi, why waste time with formalities? If there's no excitement, we might as well take a bath in the hot springs. Tsunade snorted at this, glaring at Jiraiya, knowing he was likely to gather material during such an activity. 
Orochimaru remained silent but smiled, clearly indicating he was going along with the flow. Jiraiya, unfazed by Tsunade's glare, laughed heartily. Come on, young men and women, where's your spirit? No need for drawing lots or picking names. If there's someone you've got a grudge against, just go for it. No rules. If you want to take on seven at once, go ahead. Yudo's mind word. He realized this banquet was organized for the Sanin to select their disciples. Having the Hokage's direct lineage taken members of the Uchiha and Hyuga clans carried significant political implications. In Kanoha, being part of the shinobi hierarchy's core meant being in the running for the Hokage's nomination. He wondered why the original story didn't mention new disciples for the Sanin. Was it abandoned or was it his presence that led to this banquet? Contemplating these things, Yudo didn't stand up first but instead sipped his tea quietly. I'll go first. Shudo Uchiha suddenly exclaimed. True to his moniker, Quick Blade, Shudo Uchiha was aggressive and fiery. He bowed to Haruzen Saratobi, the Sanin and his clan leader, then stepped forward, shouting, Hyuga folks, will you come at me one by one or all at once? Yudo clearly saw Fugaku's slight grimace. A fool, no doubt about it, Yudo thought with a hidden smirk. While the Hyuga clan's rules were stricter and less flamboyant than the Uchiha, the patience of young shinobi was ultimately limited. Shinosuke Hyuga first bowed formally, then approached Shudo Uchiha. Uchiha Shudo, I, Shinosuke Hyuga, will be your opponent. The space inside the house was insufficient, so the two moved to the courtyard. Those inside, possessing either hereditary dojitsu or being Kaga-level shinobi, could clearly observe every detail of the spar. Without further ado, the young men began their battle. A fireball the size of a carriage marked Shudo's initial attack. The fool's fire style. Great fireball technique forced Shinosuk to dodge, after which Shudo drew his blade, combining it with a body flicker technique, charging with lightning speed. Bang! A hemispherical chakra shield exploded in the courtyard, deflecting the fierce blade. Eight trigrams palms revolving heaven. Yudo squinted, veins around his eyes bulging as he activated his Byakugan. Revolving heaven was a secret technique of the main family, a powerful, absolute defense against all physical attacks. Typically, branch family members weren't taught this and had to steal and master it on their own. Observing it up close was a rare opportunity Yudo wouldn't miss. While he was busy absorbing every detail, the battle in the courtyard grew increasingly intense. Shudo's eyes glowed red, with two tomo spinning wildly in each. His blade, fast as lightning and crackling with electricity, indicated the use of lightning style. Shinosuk wasn't to be outdone either. After using Revolving Heaven once to counter the combined fireball and sword strike, he relied on solid gentle fist techniques and the all-seeing Byakugan to dodge and counterattack. The fierce clash lasted less than five minutes, with Shudo narrowly defeating Shinosuk. In terms of dynamic vision, the Sharingan indeed surpassed the Byakugan. With the back of his blade against Shinosuk's neck, Shudo smirked, you're strong, but not my match, under these eyes, you are the caged bird. Fugaku Uchiha's face turned dark as coal. He regretted bringing his nephew along. Does your mouth come with lightning style? Do you have to deliver such shocking remarks? Calling the Hyuga's branch family, caged birds, and not congratulating Tsunade on her family's prosperity? Shinosuke Hyuga was furious, his Byakugan nearly turning red but with the Hokage and both clan leaders present, he could only grit his teeth and approach Shudo to form the seal of reconciliation. What remarkable skill! Yudo sipped the tea leaves from the water, chewing slowly. Even Yudo had to admit that the two boys who had just finished their duel were geniuses, reaching the threshold of Jonin at just 12 or 13 years old. After making the seal of reconciliation, Shinosuke Hyuga's face looked as if it could drip water. On the other side, Shudo Uchiha still brimmed with energy, holding a sword on his shoulder as he sneered at the Hyuga group. Come at me! One on one, you stand no chance. The two Tomo Sharingan spun slowly, 
casting a crimson glow in the night. Arrogant, powerful, the Uchiha clan was always contradictory, sometimes you wanted to tear them apart, and other times you couldn't help but be fascinated by them. Young and talented, no one could bear such an insult, especially in front of their clan leader, the Hokage and the three legendary shinobi. If the young people of the Hyuga clan could tolerate this, they might as well rename themselves the Hyuga the clan of turtles. The only girl with the Byakugan in the group raised her eyebrows, ready to face the opponent. Just returned, Shinosuke Hyuga discreetly pulled her back and shook his head slightly, then signaled to Yudo and another branch family boy. Wear down the Uchiha's stamina and chakra, and let her finish him off, who played the cannon fodder, who took the bullets, and who seized the final victory was never a question in the Hyuga clan. Yudo smiled at Shinosuke, giving a reassuring look. Then, following the Hyuga teachings, the boy next to Yudo put down the teacup according to the ancient rites, wiped the water off the table, and adjusted the folds of his wide white robe. After this impeccable process, the Hyuga branch family boy was already standing in the courtyard center. Naoto Hyuga the branch family boy was quite proper, bowing politely. Shudo tilted his head, leaning on his sword. A branch family member? Yes. Then you're even less of a match. The arrogant Uchiha boy waved his hand. The previous one without the Byakugan restriction lost, you're no match for me. Perhaps. Naoto raised his right hand, forming the classic gentle fist stance. But protecting the main family is my duty. How could I fear sacrificing all my blood and flesh for the main family? All right, though I don't quite understand, if that's your reason to challenge a stronger opponent, I accept. Shudo drew his sword again, laughing arrogantly. Come, fight. Yudo lowered his head, no longer watching the fight. He was afraid, afraid that his eyes would uncontrollably reveal his killing intent while watching the battle. This killing intent was not directed at the Uchiha. Sacrificing all blood and flesh for the main family? To fight to the last drop of blood for a main family that brands oneself and one's descendants with the mark of a slave? Cruel and cold oppressors were detestable, but it was normal, they were natural adversaries, no amount of hatred was too much. However, what truly chills the hearts of the hot-blooded is the sight of the indifferent, fully tamed slave companions beside them. Such a main family, such a branch family, such a grotesque and twisted clan. While Yudo was lost in thought, the battle in the courtyard was nearing its end. Shudo was right, the branch family boy indeed stood no chance where the main family with stronger Kekiai Genkai and complete Haydn techniques failed. Naoto was beaten, his face covered in blood. The Uchiha weren't a sadistic clan, but Naoto's persistence, getting up again and again, was astonishing. Even Shudo couldn't stand it anymore, channeling lightning chakra to paralyze his opponent's muscles. Naoto lay on the ground for quite a while before getting up. As he walked back, still bleeding, he wiped his wounds and stole cautious, yet hopeful, glances at Shinosuke Hyuga and the main family girl. Like a dog awaiting its master's praise. However, Shino Sukyuga showed no approval or pity, not even a glance. Yudo stood up with his head lowered. He walked through the corridor, into the courtyard, brushing past Naoto without any exchange, as if they were parallel lines. Another branch family member. Shudo panted, having defeated two opponents, even though he felt exhausted, but the young Uchiha's voice was still energetic. You won't beat me either. Yudo raised his head, his face devoid of expression. He cracked his pinky finger, producing a crisp sound, and with chakra naturally flowing, the veins around his eyes bulged as he activated his Byakugan. Yudo Hyuga, at your service. I'm Shudo Uchihao. Yudo Hyuga? So you're the Hyuga's jewel. Shudo stroked his chin, clicking his tongue in wonder. The Uchiha clan, naturally endowed with immense love, was sensitive to others' emotions. You're angry? As expected, the Hyuga are indeed a united clan. Yudo almost let out a derisive laugh. But, no matter how touching your camaraderie, you can't avoid defeat by my blade. Boom. 
Shudo's vision blurred, losing sight of Yudo. Good move. Shudo roared, his two tomos spinning rapidly. The Sharingan's dynamic vision, peerless in the shinobi world, though barely, managed to capture Yudo's figure. Your body flicker technique is fast, but under these eyes you're destined to fail. The sword was drawn, a finely honed technique slicing through the night, carrying lightning chakra, aiming for Yudo's body. In a flash, Shudo's mind formulated the next move, this slash wouldn't take down the Huga's jewel. He'd likely duck, allowing a knee strike. Bang. A loud crash interrupted Shudo's thoughts. His sword halted mid-swing, gripped tightly by a hand. Even among Jonin, few could withstand a blade with their bare hands, especially one infused with powerful lightning chakra. Yet, Yudo did. With terrifying finger strength and wrist power honed through relentless training, excellent vision, and courage, but most importantly, with the chakra flame dancing around Yudo's hand, like a lively, fiery beast's fong. Self-created Nintaijutsu gentle fist art, lion's fong bite, this was the only technique Yudo Hyuga had created in twelve years, combining his understanding of taijutsu and gentle fist with his imagination from past manga, resulting in a deadly move. The chakra flame was sharp and agile, like the fangs of a moving beast. Creak, creak, the precious sword groaned in agony, ready to snap at any moment. Yudo advanced indifferently, his other hand also igniting with lion's fong bite. With power and speed surpassing most jonin, this hand struck Shudo. Blood splattered, and the Uchiha boy was sent flying. In the great hall, Jiraiya opened his eyes wide and turned his head, looking at his teacher with a questioning expression. After many years as student and teacher, their bond was like father and son. Hiruzen understood what Jiraiya wanted to ask. It shouldn't be the Hyuga clan's secret technique. Also, for the Byakugan, this kind of chakra armor attack is very rare. I knew it, Jiraiya said, rubbing his chin with a sigh. When that kid started, I thought he was going to use the Raisingan. Oh? The one Minato developed. Yes, but this technique doesn't have the compression and spinning power of the Raisingan. It seems this kid borrowed many of the Gentle Fist's principles, increasing its penetration and hardness. This technique probably isn't fully developed. He's a genius, Hiruzen praised. A pity for such a good seedling, Jiraiya said with a slight huff, though his displeasure wasn't aimed at Yudo. Hiruzen looked down silently. Below, Shudo Uchiha was being helped back by his clansmen, not seeming seriously injured. Yudo stood in place, waiting for the next battle. Behind this promising young talent, the Hyuga clan members were not cheering. Instead, Shinosuk Hyuga and that clan girl had different emotions in their eyes. Those emotions were definitely not joy and pride. Seeing all this, the third Hokage felt even more displeased with the Hyuga clan. Long ago, the Hyuga were much more influential. The Byakugan used in war was an invincible weapon, and even the Uchiha and Senju had to give them some leeway. But the system of the main and branch families had completely ruined the Hyuga's vigor. Stagnant, each generation worse than the last. Even if a genius appeared, they often died young due to various reasons. Now, it had been a long time since the Hyuga clan produced a Kaga-level warrior. During Hiruzen Saratobi's tenure as Hokage, reducing the influence of the clans was always one of his unwavering policies. This had never changed. But the Hyuga clan was an oddity. He didn't need to weaken them. They did it themselves. Year after year, the Hyuga clan continued to decline, barely maintaining their dignity with their Kekiai Genkai and the remnants of their ancestors' glory. The entire clan was like a caged bird trapped by the main branch system. Hiruzen sighed silently, using a certain technique to compress his voice into a line, secretly speaking to his three beloved students. You all know why I gathered you here. So, what do you think? The teacher's question received no response from his students. Orochimaru sat there calmly, watching the battle in the courtyard, occasionally sipping tea. Jiraiya, on the other hand, had taken out a small notebook, dipping his pen in ink and writing as if inspiration had struck. 
Tsunade was the worst. She was drinking bowl after bowl of sake, her cheeks flushed, her eyes glazed and unfocused. Anyone who didn't know better, might think the Senja clan's sage body was naturally alcohol intolerant. Hiruzen rolled his eyes in frustration. He knew his students all too well. The plan to have the three shinobi take on students to stimulate the Uchiha and Hyuga clans to contribute more during the war sounded great, but had one major prerequisite. The three shinobi had to be willing to take on students. When children grow up, they are hard to manage, especially three powerful, young, Kaga-level shinobi. The three shinobi were all resistant to taking on students. At this time, Orochimaru, although he had started human experiments, was still loyal to Konoha. With the third Hokage aging, he was preparing to vie for the position of fourth Hokage. Taking on Uchiha or Hyuga clan members might gain the support of the two clans, but since this was merely a strategic move, it could cause trouble later on. It was better not to take on the responsibility. Jiraiya, while willing to teach the younger generation a bit, had become very cautious about taking on students after the Toad Sage's prophecy that his student would bring great change to the shinobi world. As for Tsunade, it was purely due to psychological trauma. After the deaths of her brother Nawaki Senju and lover Dan Kato, Tsunade developed severe hemophobia. Being a shinobi afraid of blood was a massive flaw. Thus, Tsunade became disheartened, left Konoha, and wandered with young Shizen, not caring about village affairs anymore. The three shinobi were shirking, and Haruzen Saratobi, unable to scold his students in front of so many people, could only sit quietly, watching the young shinobi fight in the courtyard. Time passed, and soon, the four Uchiha and four Hyuga geniuses had all taken their turns. Among them, the most impressive was naturally Yudo. With an outstanding body honed through steady training, mastery of the gentle fist, his genius self-created Nintaijutsu Lion's Fong Bite, keen insight and excellent judgment, he stood out among his peers, nearly dominating. Ultimately, these were merely ordinary geniuses. The real monsters, like the young Shursue or the unborn Itachi, wouldn't be here, allowing Yudo Hyuga to win so easily. The young shinobi had showcased their skills, and the banquet resumed. No one was seriously injured. The Saratobi clan had a dedicated medical team, and soon the eight geniuses were back in their seat. After a while of eating and drinking, Hiruzen suddenly coughed, stretching lazily. Everyone, our Saratobi clan is renowned in the ninja world for our plant research. Even now, our clan grounds house rare flowers and fruits cultivated by our ancestors. Let's take a break, and we will reconvene here in a quarter of an hour. Everyone paused immediately understanding the third Hokage's intention. He wanted to send them away to have a private conversation with the three shinobi about taking on students. Fugaku Uchiha and Hayashi Hyuga exchanged a few polite words and respectfully withdrew with their clansmen. In the Great Hall, the over 50-year-old Haruzen Saratobi stood with his hands behind his back for a long time. Finally, he slowly turned around, tiredly saying, Tsunade, Jiraiya, huh? He was about to give a heartfelt speech and persuade the three shinobi, but when he turned around, his three students were all gone. While their teacher was gathering his emotions, the students had slipped away. You three brats! In the great hall, Hiruzen Saratobi tugged at his beard, nearly losing his composure and cursing. At the same time, in a fragrant garden within the Saratobi clan grounds, Yudo stopped walking. He bowed respectfully as taught by his clan, Shinosuk-sama, Miko-sama. Yudo bowed respectfully, standing with hands at his sides in front of two main family geniuses. Even the strictest and most traditional elders of the Hyuga family could not find fault in his behavior. The Jewel of the Hyuga Shinosuk Hyuga murmured softly, the shadows of the leaves obscuring most of his face, making his expression fragmented. No wonder you're called the Hyuga's Jewel. I've heard of a prodigy from the Branch family, but I didn't believe it at first. Seeing you in action tonight, you're indeed formidable. He paused, his voice suddenly becoming sharp. 
but the Branch family cannot bear the title of the Huga's Jewel. That is the responsibility and honor of the main family. Yudo Huga, you have overstepped. Do you think I want to carry the Huga name? Ignorant pests, Yudo mocked silently, but his face remained calm as he responded. It's just the admiration of my village peers. I'm not worthy to represent the Huga family. It's good that you understand. Shinosuke's expression softened slightly. The move you used to defeat Shudo Uchiha tonight, did you create it yourself? Yes. Hand it over to the family's secret techniques room. Shinosuke's expression was as if he was saying, let's have grilled meat tonight in a casual manner. As a member of the Hyuga, everyone has the duty to enhance the family's heritage. According to the rules, the branch family must submit their unique techniques to receive appropriate reward. At the next family meeting, you may kneel behind me and the elders of the main family. If you continue to contribute, you'll have more opportunities like this. How about handing it over now? If it weren't for the tense atmosphere, Yudo would have burst out laughing. Countless nights of thoughtful pondering, enduring solitude and pain to develop a secret technique, and you think you can take it with a word? The reward is kneeling beside you. I know, at family meetings, the closer a branch member is to the main family, the higher their status. But look at me, do I really look like a dog? Yudo blinked, trying to evade the trouble in front of him. Sorry, Shino Suksama, the time set by the Hokage for reassembly is near. Shino Suk's face turned completely cold. Yudo Hyuga, do you dare to defy family rules? He stepped forward, veins bulging at his temples. The main family is the master of the Hyuga. The branch family is the shield and sword of the main family. It seems you've forgotten your obligations as a branch member. Sensing his thoughts, the main family girl Miko Hyuga also activated her Byakugan, coldly staring at Yudo. Yudo frowned, feeling uneasy. He had outshone tonight, hurting their ridiculous pride. Before he could think of a solution, he heard rustling footsteps on the grass behind him. Activating his Byakugan instantly, Yudo saw Naoto Hyuga approaching from behind through his 360-degree vision. Obedient dog, Yudo sneered. One against three, Shinosuke, Miko, and Naoto. These Hyugas were not weak. If a real fight started, he would have to fight with all his might. Main family rules? Ridiculous. Do they expect him to offer his face to be stepped on? Yudo wasn't that lowly. The lone boy showed no expression, but his body roared with chakra, the lion's teeth subtly appearing. However, the fierce battle Yudo anticipated did not happen. In the dark garden, Shinosuke raised a hand to his mouth, sneering at Yudo. That smile was as if he were crushing an insect. The next moment, endless pain erupted from the depths of Yudo's eyes. From his eyeballs to his optic nerves and entire brain, it felt like a rusty pair of scissors was shredding his flesh and nerves from the inside out. Needles, knives, fire, swords. No pain could compare to this torture. Unable to resist, Yudo clutched his head, curling up in agony. A hand suddenly appeared, it was Naoto, clamping Yudo's mouth shut, nails digging into his flesh, indifferent to his suffering, preventing any sound from escaping. After an unknown period, Yudo stopped struggling. Naoto released his grip, shaking off the blood. Yudo had bitten his tongue in pain. Yudo, dazed, struggled to see clearly but found everything a blur. Can't see anything, right? Shino Sukyuga approached, looking with interest, at Yudo's bloodshot eyes. The caged bird, a perfected seal over a thousand years, not only destroys the brain and eyes upon death, but also can be activated by the main family to destroy the brain tissue. Of course, even the most perfect thing has flaws. The main family boy leaned in, his pure white eyes filled with condescending malice. For example, Activating the caged bird often causes varying degrees of vision damage, some recover in days, some never. You might end up blind. A gurgling sound emerged from Yudo's throat. Shinosuke leaned in to listen but couldn't understand, standing up disappointedly. Bit your own tongue, huh? You sure can endure. 
But no matter how much you endure, how tough you are, what does it matter? You're just a branch member. Yudo Hyuga, remember, I'll say this only once. Shinosuk Hyuga pointed at himself, then at Yudo's forehead protector. I am a Hyuga, and you are a Hyuga, but we are not the same. For a shinobi, the most important thing is where you're born. With that, he left with Miko Hyuga and Naoto Hyuga, leaving Yudo immobile. The branch family boy clawed at the dirt, desperately trying to stand and chase after them. Plans and timing didn't matter anymore. He just wanted to tear those three's throats with the lion's teeth, drenching himself in revenge's blood. Sadly, no matter how he tried, he couldn't succeed. The activated caged bird was one of the most torturous methods in the shinobi world. In the dark garden, moonlight slowly spread. It took a long time for Yudo to regain some strength. He shakily took out a hemostatic ointment from his pouch, roughly applying it to his tongue. The pain from the ointment was sharp but less than the caged bird's torment and nowhere near the burning anger and hatred in his heart. Russell, Russell. Footsteps approached from behind, someone unexpectedly arriving. You look terrible, kid. A woman's voice reached Yudo's ears in the night. The branch family boy turned. A blonde woman held a wine jar, drunk, with a bold yet lazy demeanor. The unique vitality and sunny chakra of the Senju clan seemed to drive away the night's chill. In a certain garden within the Saratobi clan grounds, Yudo leaned back on a stone bench, eyes tightly shut. Tsunade reached out with one hand, gently covering Yudo's eyes. Soft chakra flowed from her palm to his eyeballs and optic nerves, stimulating cell repair and regeneration. Using chakra, a powerful and wild energy, for medical purposes is extremely difficult. When treating delicate systems like the visual and brain tissues, it's akin to embroidery on the tip of a needle. In the entire shinobi world, fewer than five people could manage such a feat fortunately, Tsunade was one of them. In terms of medical ninjutsu, this last descendant of the Senju clan was undoubtedly the best. After some time, the cool sensation abruptly vanished. Yudo opened his eyes, and though he felt a stabbing pain, his vision finally cleared. The pain will last for about a week. Drink plenty of water and get lots of rest, the blonde Tsunade said, letting out a relieved breath. She let her tied-up hair down and took a sip of sake. Tsunade was a very ethical healer and wouldn't drink while treating patients. Yudo rubbed his still tense forehead and, after a long silence, bowed deeply to Tsunade. Tsunade-sama, you have saved my life as a shinobi. From now on, I am at your service, no matter the cost. Hey hey that's enough, kid from the Hyuga clan, Tsunade grimaced. If it were anyone else, making such a face would seem comical, but Tsunade's beauty made even unguarded expressions captivating. Kid, your name is Yudo Hyuga, right? How old are you? I'm twelve, Tsunade-sama. The blonde woman was momentarily stunned and took another gulp of sake. Twelve, huh? Many your age are still recent graduates and troublemakers, yet you've made a name for yourself through your own efforts. With young talents like you, the will of fire will surely be passed on. Tsunade-sama, I am not strong enough yet. There is still much I need to learn. When I was your age, I also wanted to master my clan's Kekiai Genkai and restore the Senju glory. But now, I feel that simply being strong won't necessarily get you what you want. The strong might not always get what they desire, but the weak will certainly lose more. Such a boyish view, Tsunade said lightly, tilting her head to look at Yudo. She suddenly asked, Your injury, is it from the caged bird? Yudo lowered his head. After a moment, he stood up, Resting his hands on the stone railing of the pavilion, the night wind blowing through his bangs, carrying a faint scent of blood. Tsunade couldn't see the boy's expression, but his silhouette against the railing made her feel uneasy. Ten years ago, her younger brother Nawaki was also twelve. On his birthday, he wore the crystal necklace she had given him, leaned on the railing atop the Hokage building, and talked about his youthful dreams. Then, the day after his birthday, he died in the chaos of war. 
The blonde woman took another large sip of sake. When people are troubled, they seek escape, and sake is a good thing, though the strong body of the Senju clan made alcohol less effective on Tsunade. Yes, Tsunade-sama, you are right. At that moment, Yudo's voice came from ahead. It might seem like airing dirty laundry, but you are one of the three Sanin of Kanoha. To me, you are a trustworthy senior. I won't hide it from you. The one who cast the caged bird jutsu was Shino Sokyuga. TCH, Tsunade mocked without hesitation. The Hyuga have fallen so far that they disclose the caged bird secrets to a child. Tsunade seemed to have a low opinion of the Hyuga clan. When I was little, there were several strong figures in the Hyuga family. Though they were not as great as my grandfather, they were formidable. But now, ha, huh, the caged bird imprisons both the branch and main families. Maybe, Yudo said calmly. When the caged bird activates, it hurts a lot. For a second or two, I wished I had a kunai to stab the caster in the neck. Such thoughts would be heresy in the Hyuga clan, but to Tsunade, they seemed normal. If a twelve-year-old genius, made to suffer by a curse seal, still thought of serving the main family, Tsunade would think the person was either brainwashed or lying. Kid, you can say that to me, but forget those feelings outside of the Saratobi grounds. I told you because I see you as a genuinely kind figure, someone I can trust with everything. Heh, you sure know how to talk. So what now? Yudo Hyuga, what do you think of the main family now? Now, I don't know what to think. Surprisingly, I don't feel much anger or hatred. Tsunade-sama, I don't know how to put it. Speak freely, kid. It's just us here. Yes. Tsunade-sama. Yudo hesitated for the first time. Can I really say this? To reopen the wounds of a woman who has lost her loved ones, just to achieve my own goals? Yudo, you are so dirty. The hesitation lasted only a moment. The next second, Yudo suppressed it and spoke words he remembered from a manga in his previous life. Losing those you care about in battle isn't a shinobi's mission. Because I live in a world filled with death and chaos, I want to strive for peace. I love this village and my comrades, so I want to protect them. Since my parents died, this thought has always sustained me. So Tsunade-sama, I want to become Hokage. Because being Hokage means protecting everyone. That has always been my dream. Tsunade was stunned. Those long buried, painful memories suddenly resurfaced. Ten years ago, when she and Dan Kato pledged their love, Dan had said the same thing. It was a secret between her and Dan. Since Dan's death in the Second Shinobi War, she had been the only one who knew those bold and determined vows. Now, the twelve-year-old Yudo seemed to embody two figures. The blonde woman tilted her head back, raising her sake bottle, but it was empty. Nawaki, Dan, do you want me to help this boy? Late at night in the Saratobi clan compound, behind the banquet hall is a sealed room protected by sealing technique. Hiruzen Saratobi sat in a wide chair, dissatisfied as he banged on the table. You too. One spends all day loafing around wanting to be a writer, the other mysteriously tinkers with God knows what, acting like a ghost. You're both almost thirty, can't you let me have some peace of mind? Where's Tsunade? I haven't seen her in ages. No idea, old man, Jiraiya leaned against the wall, hands behind his head grinning frivolously, maybe she's out gambling? Don't worry, once she loses all her money, she'll hide out here. She always loses. Ha ha ha. Orochimaru's lips curved slightly. He stood with his arms crossed, his attitude much more respectful than Jiraiya's, but it was clear neither of them took this scolding as the Hokage's reprimand. At most, it was a sensei's loving chastisement for his students. At this moment, Hiruzen, Jiraiya, Orochimaru, and Tsunade weren't merely superior and subordinates, or sensei and students. They were more like a family. You brats. Hiruzen's beard quivered as he glared at them, as the Sanin, you shouldn't just think of yourselves. You need to think more about the village. If you could take on and teach some Uchiha and Hyuga children, 
they would contribute more in future wars. He earnestly spoke at length about it, but in the end, neither Jiraiya nor Orochimaru showed any intention of changing their minds. Hiruzen sighed, feeling a rare sense of, my sons are grown but they're useless. Forget it, I'll think and find another way. There are always more methods. As Hiruzen pondered, there was a sudden crash against the wall. Smoke and dust rose, and with brute force, the seal was easily broken. A blonde woman kicked aside the rubble, blowing her fist. Old man, got any more sake? Hiruzen's brow twitched violently, feeling uncharacteristically bewildered. How did he raise these three? He should have taught them to respect their sensei, but now they all acted like rebellious teens. Old man, bring the sake. Tsunade grinned, putting her hands around Hiruzen's neck. Got some good news, you'll be happy to hear. Hiruzen's eyes lit up, Tsunade you. Yep, that's right. Tsunade patted her chest, causing a noticeable ripple. I'm going to take on an apprentice. Who? Who else? Out of everyone tonight, only that kid from the branch family is worthy. Yudo Hyuga, huh? Hiruzen exhaled in relief, praising, excellent choice, Tsunade. He's not only talented but also capable of seeing things from a higher perspective. What his Byakugan can perceive isn't limited to just the Hyuga clan. Orochimaru was a bit surprised, and Jiraiya, Unable to contain himself, asked directly, Huh? Weren't you against taking on apprentices? Before returning to the village, the three of us agreed to stand united, no matter how much the old man persuaded us. Ouch! Tsunade reached out and twisted Jiraiya's arm fiercely and huffed. I suddenly changed my mind. This village, my grandfather's legacy, should nurture talented youth. Left with the Hyuga, even gems turned to stones. As she spoke, she subconsciously reached into her bosom, clutching a crystal necklace. Nawaki, Dan, today, I saw your shadows in a young Hyuga boy. He, like you, wants to be Hokage and protect this village. I miss you so much that I can't help but aid him, temporarily returning to Kanoha to become his sensei. I hope I won't regret this, right? When Yudo returned home, it was already midnight. As soon as he entered the house, he collapsed onto the bed. Fatigue and pain overwhelmed him instantly, and he felt his head spinning, ready to pass out at any moment. The activation of the caged bird seal was extremely harmful to the recipient. Although Tsunade had done her utmost to heal him, Yudo still needed some time to recuperate. Shinosuke, Miko, Naoto, Yudo murmured, his expression void of emotion. At this moment, he felt no waves in his heart. Ever since his parents died when he was three, he viewed the entire Hyuga clan as enemies. He wore a thick mask every second he was within the clan grounds, always performing and scheming. Between enemies, killing and harming each other was normal, there was no such thing as betrayal. The main family could brand him with the caged bird seal, Shinosuke Hyuga could activate it without a care and Naoto Hyuga could restrain him from behind, letting him suffer in pain. Naturally, Yudo could strike back, even more harshly and decisively. Harming each other was the job of enemies. Feeling drowsy, the branch family boy placed a shortened sunbon in his mouth and drifted off to sleep. After an unknown amount of time, he was awakened by a faint tapping sound. Who is it? Yudo Hyuga, the clan leader wants to see you. All right. Yudo washed his face, removed the short needle from his mouth that prevented him from sleep-talking, and opened the door. He followed the Hyuga clan member who had come to relay the message towards the deeper parts of the compound. The night was thick. Yudo glanced at the position of the moon, knowing it wasn't yet dawn. He had slept for no more than three hours. Only one room in Hayashi Hyuga's residence was lit. Yudo was led inside and knelt on one knee before Hayashi. Yudo Kuen, stand up, Hayashi said gently. Tomorrow, two hours after the sun fully rises, a servant from the Senju clan will bring an invitation. As a courtesy, I will prepare a reply. Under the gaze of the Byakugan, Yudo's chakra remained perfectly calm. What composure! No wonder Lady Tsunade favors him, 
high as she thought. He continued, after exchanging the letters, you will become Tsunade-sama's apprentice. You performed well at tonight's banquet. Yudo exhaled softly. It seemed Nawaki Senju and Dan Kato held significant places in Tsunade's heart. Through risk and calculation, Yudo finally got his wish, altering the storyline for the first time. He became Tsunade's second apprentice after Shizun. Yudo Kuen, Hayashi looked at the boy's forehead protector. The Hyuga have the distinction between the main and branch families, but the clan's heart is not divided. Whether main or branch, we all inherit the Byakugan. There are no closer relatives in this world. Remember that. Clan leader, I understand. The branch family boy responded sincerely, bowing deeply. Every little bit, I'll never forget. These past two days, something big happened in Kanoha. The only remaining bloodline of the Senju clan, the granddaughter of the first Hokage, Tsunade Senju, has taken on a new apprentice. And that apprentice is none other than the recently famous Jewel of the Hyuga Yudo Hyuga. The civilians and regular shinobi couldn't think much of it and were simply happy. After all, it's a good thing that Lady Tsunade has returned to Kanoha to train new talents. It signifies a seamless transfer of heritage within the village, and potentially another powerful warrior in the future. However, those who knew a bit more about the village's darker side were slightly surprised. The legendary Sanin had not taken on apprentices for a long time. Tsunade's sudden high profile returned to the village and her taking a Hyuga boy as her disciple raised questions about whether the village leadership was reconsidering its policies towards the noble clans, or perhaps, both openly and covertly, the name Yudo Hyuga appeared in many conversations. The nickname Jewel of the Hyuga was at least well known throughout Kanoha. The highly acclaimed Yudo was currently in the Senju clan's compound. He knelt on the tatami, wearing a loose white robe, with his long, smooth hair tied at the end with a red string. He appeared gentle and calm. Tsunade stood in front of him and threw out a package, for you? Yes, Tsunade-sensei. Yudo opened the package, which contained just a few simple clothes. A cloak, a vest, a jacket. The materials used for these clothes were excellent, and even with some force, Yudo couldn't tear them. More importantly, the back of each piece of clothing bore the emblem of the Senju clan. These were bought a long time ago from Kumogakure, the blonde woman remarked with curiosity. Don't underestimate those guys, though they love Kenjutsu and seem rough, they pay attention to detail in some areas, especially the special combat fabric they use, its durability is among the best in the five great nations. Probably because their intense kenjutsu training requires more durable clothing, huh? You're only twelve, and although you've developed well, you still have a child's body. I had to search for a long time to find clothes that fit you. We'll prepare new ones as you grow. For some reason, Yudo felt that Tsunade's tone was a bit melancholic as she spoke. After thinking it over, he guessed the reason. She probably remembered her deceased brother, Perhaps these clothes originally belonged to Nawaki. Yudo sighed inwardly and chose a green coat to wear over his white kimono. Though he preferred red, in Kanoha, white with a red robe or red with a white robe was reserved for the Hokage. Wearing the white kimono of the Hyuga clan, he had to be careful. Hmm, very cute. Tsunade patted Yudo's head with satisfaction. How have you been these past few days? Very good. Yudo replied sincerely. More people in the village recognize me now. Although I know most of them don't acknowledge me for myself, but because of the prestige of the Senju clan and you, Sensei, it is still very satisfying. The feeling of being trusted and expected. It's addictive. Our apprentices naturally attract such attention. Ever since that guy taught Minato, the village has had high expectations for our students. I won't disappoint you, Sensei. Oh? Do you have the confidence to surpass Minato? To be honest, not at all. Minato-sama is a true genius, far beyond me. Yes, mastering the flying thunder god technique makes one very formidable. Tsunade smiled as she ruffled Yudo's hair, 
So, just be yourself and don't worry about others. Yudo almost wanted to laugh. The chakra of the Senju clan was filled with vitality, warm and cozy. With Tsunade standing with her back to the sunlight, he felt a strange sensation, as if a large golden retriever was petting him. Don't be rude, Yudo. The woman in front of you just gave you new clothes. Yudo reminded himself as he took a deep breath and sat upright. Don't be nervous, Yudo. Tsunade withdrew her hand and looked at her disciple seriously. Tell me, what goals do you have? Don't say becoming Hokage, that's a dream requiring a long, long time to achieve. In the short term, what do you want to do? Yudo Hyuga thought for a while and then said carefully, Sensei, I know that war is about to start. More and more information tells me that the world is on the brink of intense change. Kanoha, Kumogakure, Kirigakure. It seems all the shinobi villages are amassing something. As a Kanoha shinobi, a member of the Hyuga clan, and a disciple of one of the Sanin, I have no reason not to go to the battlefield. Therefore, my only thought now is that during the war, I want to protect my comrades in the village. Even if it costs my life and these eyes, I won't back down. Tsunade was slightly stunned and suddenly recalled what her teacher said the night before, that child can think from a higher perspective, what he sees is not just limited to the Hyuga clan. A twelve-year-old child could already see the world's turbulent changes? Tsunade sighed and said softly, if you want to protect your comrades, you need to achieve two things. First, at least a basic knowledge of medical ninjutsu, and second, the strength to fight the enemy. She looked out the window at the vast but empty Senju clan ground. There was no one in sight. In fact, at this time, only she and Yudo were in the entire Senju compound. You probably know that the most powerful ability of the Senju clan is the Kekiai Genkai who would release. But unfortunately, including myself, no one in the world has this power anymore. I can't teach you the Senju clan's ultimate techniques. What I can give you are the things I've mastered myself. What you will teach me is naturally going to be the best. You really know how to flatter, indeed. Men are the cutest when they're young. Tsunade laughed. In the coming period, I will teach you the basics of medical ninjutsu and a few of my specialty techniques. I'll adjust the teaching speed according to your progress. She thoughtfully touched her chin. I watched your fight that night. Good physical condition, solid foundation in the three basic techniques, and the jutsu you developed has potential. Combining it with superhuman strength might be a good approach. The blonde woman suddenly slapped her thigh hard. Forget it, talking so much is useless. We both lean towards taijutsu, so what kind of training suits you can only be determined after getting to know you better? She tied her hair with a rope and then took out a bell to hang on her waist. Yudo immediately understood what she wanted to do, a traditional icebreaking game between Kanoha mentors and their students. Come on, Yudo. The blonde woman cracked her knuckles, standing proudly like a Valkyrie. The location is restricted to the back mountain of the Senju clan compound. From now until sunset, you have half a day to take this bell from me. At sunset, in Kanoha, within the Senju clan territory, due to wars and various accidents, the top clan of the ninja world, the Senju clan of the forest, has drastically weakened, leaving only Tsunade Senju as the direct bloodline descendant. The vast clan territory had been uninhabited for a long time. The walls were old and mottled, the roofs and stone steps were cracked, and only the massive statues of Hashirama Senju testified to the family's former glory. However, today, the long-deserted Senju territory was brimming with new life. Boom! A loud explosion erupted from the back mountain of the Senju territory. Several large trees were easily snapped by monstrous strength, and the flying trunks cut through the forest, leaving a dragon-like trail of dust. Such slender and fair arms could unleash such terrifying power, with just her chakra-enhanced strength, Tsunade could firmly stand among the jonin. Yudo, panting heavily, hid behind a huge rock. Since the bell-stealing game started, several hours had passed. 
He had used every method, set traps, launched sneak attacks, and even used explosive tags, but even with the advantage of his Byakugan, the gap between him and Tsunade was still too great. Yo, my dear disciple, are you too shy to meet your teacher? The golden-haired woman stood on a large tree in the sunset's afterglow, her arms crossed, overlooking the surroundings. Don't forget, your task is to steal the bell from my waist, Tsunade shook a bit, and the bell moved, making a crisp sound. Yudo took a deep breath and said helplessly, Tsunade-sensei, for someone like me, challenging a sanin level opponent is really too early. Although it's quite embarrassing to say this, sensei, can you go a bit easier on me? Tsunade laughed, with your current abilities, you indeed can't even touch me, so... I'll lower the difficulty for you. She took off the bell and threw it high into the sky. For five seconds, I won't go after the bell. If you catch it within this time, you pass. With the 360-degree vision of the Byakugan, the woman's spread fingers were clearly visible. The bell would probably stop at the highest point in about three seconds and then fall freely. There was still time. Yudo focused the remaining chakra in his eyes and legs and dashed out from behind the rock. The Byakugan's terrifying insight allowed him to take in every detail within a kilometer, including the dirt he stepped on, the shallow traces left by the wind on the leaves, the slight curve of the golden-haired woman's mouth, and the bell glowing golden in the sunset. Boom. Yudo instantly covered over a hundred meters and jumped onto a tree in a few leaps. Above him, the bell lost its speed, paused in the air, and then fell freely. Time's up. At this moment, Tsunade suddenly spoke and disappeared from her original spot in a flash. Body flicker. Yudo thought to himself and made a quick decision. He jumped forcefully, aiming to grab the bell first. Almost simultaneously, Tsunade's fist hit Yudo's back, and Yudo's hand touched the bell. The branch family boy was spun away like a top. Fortunately, Tsunade had held back. Otherwise, this blow could have snapped his spine. The bell. Yudo lost his balance and felt dizzy. The bell was within reach, but he couldn't grab it. Fortunately, he still had a sense of space. As he was about to hit the ground, he kicked a nearby tree, adjusted his posture, and managed to land on his feet at the last moment. I must get the bell. Yudo stretched out his left hand to grab the bell while blindly striking backward with his other hand, focusing all his chakra on his fingertip. With a bang, Tsunade and Yudo landed simultaneously. A tenth of a second later, a crisp sound echoed through the mountains. The bell fell to the ground, and Yudo ultimately failed to catch it. Behind the branch family boy, the golden-haired beauty caught his right hand and effortlessly pinned him down. You're very smart, Yudo, Tsunade praised her disciple. At the last moment, you guessed the direction of my attack and used gentle fists to block it in advance. Although you didn't succeed, it was still a brilliant tactic. Yudo shrugged and winced. The blind spot of the Byakugan is directly behind the first thoracic vertebra. Anyone who knows this would naturally attack there. Unfortunately, your taijutsu skills are far superior to mine, sensei. Tsunade released him and flicked the dust off the bell with her foot, picking it up. Yudo, the blind spot of the Byakugan is not a fatal weakness. What's the difference between a 360-degree view and a 359-degree view? Many clever people, like you just did, use that blind spot as a trap to lure enemies, turning a weakness into a strength. Yudo stood respectfully, listening to his teacher's guidance. Ignore the blind spot of the Byakugan, Yudo. Your biggest weakness now is Gentle Fist. Gentle Fist, the proud taijutsu of the Hyuga clan, is strong in its own right. Often, it can injure enemies internally and target their acupoints. But the core of Gentle Fist is injecting your own chakra into the enemy's most vulnerable parts. Ultimately, most of your attacks must be executed through physical contact with the enemy. What if you encounter someone using an iron shell? Even a C-rank defensive earth release could render you helpless. On the battlefield, 
Hyuga Shinobi often pair with explosive squads to compensate for their long-range weaknesses and inability to break through tough defenses. On the battlefield, complementing each other is fine, but you are different, Yudo. You are my disciple. Reputation is a double-edged sword. Beheading the genius of the Hyuga branch family, and taking the life of one of the three Sanin Tsunade's disciple, have entirely different strategic significances. Moreover, if you truly aspire to become Hokage, you must achieve perfection in your combat skills. Yudo, what was that technique you used at the banquet? Yudo replied respectfully, Lion's Fong Bite, Tsunade Sensei. A great attempt. I see a lot of potential in this technique. You probably realize the issues with gentle fist and are already working to overcome your weaknesses. Yudo, from now on, will focus on two things. First, I'll teach you medical ninjutsu. Don't underestimate or resist it. Learning medical ninjutsu can greatly enhance your chakra control. Second, I'll teach you chakra enhanced strength and help you perfect lion's fong bite. Jiraiya and Minato are experts in shape transformation ninjutsu. We can often consult them. As for other jutsu, like the Ein seal on my forehead, I'll teach you, but not now. Yudo, getting stronger can't be rushed. Yudo nodded, fully agreeing with his golden-haired teacher. Sensei, I understand. Biting off more than you can chew is futile. What a sensible child. Tsunade chuckled, patting the boy's head. At this moment, the sun had completely set, and the back mountain of the Senju territory was enveloped in darkness. Let's go Yudo, Tsunade stretched lazily. I'm so tired. Let's go have some ramen. Whatever you say, Tsunade sensei. Yudo you pay. Your sensei has lost all her money, ha ha. Time passed day by day. During this period, Yudo had already adapted to his current identity. As a disciple of the one of the three Sanin, he received much more attention than before. Except for returning to the Hyuga compound at night, he spent most of his days in the Senju compound, either practicing the medical ninjutsu and chakra-enhanced strength taught by Tsunade or studying medical book. Due to the need to teach Yudo, Tsunade temporarily ended her wandering lifestyle and moved to the Senju compound with Shizun. She also ignored Kanoha's political affairs, focusing solely on teaching Yudo. Shizun was a year younger than Yudo, the same age as Kakashi, and was still an eleven-year-old little girl, far from the gentle and virtuous demeanor she had in the manga's main storyline. At first, the little girl was quite hostile to Yudo, likely out of childish jealousy, feeling that this guy without pupils had stolen Tsunade Sensei's attention. However, this small hostility lasted less than a day. Having been bombarded by short videos from another world, Yudo was a master at coaxing girls. With a little effort, he made the little girl smile, calling him, my kohai happily, and went to buy fish. For beginners of medical ninjutsu, experiments were often conducted on various small animals, and fish were the most commonly chosen. These ancient vertebrates had relatively simple structures, making them suitable for practice. More importantly, even if the medical ninjutsu failed and the fish's body was messed up, it could still be used to make fish soup, avoiding waste. Medical ninjutsu might not sound cool, but only those who practiced it truly understood how it tested chakra control. When infusing chakra, even a slight excess would cause the recipient's nerves and muscles to necrotize. This was quite similar to the training of chakra-enhanced strength. The same ninjutsu, in some people's hands, could only break bricks and logs, but in the hands of a strong person like Tsunade, it could split mountains and rock. Both required extremely high precision in chakra control, and the training of chakra-enhanced strength and medical ninjutsu complemented each other. In the morning, Yudo practiced medical ninjutsu, and in the afternoon, he honed his chakra-enhanced strength. Tsunade often came to impart medical knowledge, and everything proceeded in an orderly manner. The only thing that stalled was the development of lion's fong bite. The idea behind this technique was very high. When Yudo first conceived it, 
He aimed to combine gentle fist techniques with the chakra emission technique of the Raisingan to create a solid chakra shell around his hand, compensating for his lack of offensive power. In simple terms, it was a miniaturized and trimmed-down version of Susanu, covering his hand, designed to complement the Byakugan. However, it was much harder to implement than it sounded. Fixing the shape of the chakra, increasing its hardness without losing flexibility, maintaining offensive capability without harming oneself. Each problem was a hurdle, but fortunately, Yudo made a good start by first creating the shape. By the second month of apprenticing under Tsunade, Yudo could already extract and reinsert the spine of a fish. After being released, the fish swam energetically, and the soup made from it was particularly delicious. In terms of chakra enhanced strength, due to his childhood practice of gentle fist, Yudo adapted to this ninjutsu quickly and progressed rapidly. He could already shatter rocks the size of an adult with a single punch. When combined with gentle fist, the alternating bursts of hard and soft power significantly increased his combat strength. However, the progress on Lion's Fong Bite was minimal. Tsunade was also quite frustrated with this issue. Although she was an expert in medical ninjutsu, she didn't understand much about the field of chakra. Turning energy into incredibly hard armor was almost beyond her capability. Helpless, Tsunade had to take Yudo to find Minato Namikaze. To some extent, the Raisingan could be considered flowing armor. Minato's greatest talents lay in his reflexes and spatial awareness, and he also had profound insights into the transformation of chakra nature. Of course, Minato did not refuse. Publicly, Tsunadeheim was one of the three Sanin, holding a higher status than him. Privately, she was a comrade in arms who had shared life and death with his master. Minato had no reason not to help. The Yellow Flash was indeed an excellent shinobi, and he was also a good person. He set aside some time to study with Yudo in depth. Yudo Kuen, let me be blunt, I think you might be overthinking this. I don't know where you got this idea, but why turn chakra into armor? Chakra is energy, it is wind, lightning, water. It flows. If you look at it microscopically, everything, including time, is active. Turning chakra into armor is like killing it. Yudo Kuen, I think you should. Minato's words gave Yudo great inspiration, and he immediately realized that he was indeed overthinking. Reading the manga and watching TV in his previous life, Susanoo had left too deep an impression on him, influencing his thinking. With Minato's guidance, the development of Lion's Fong Bite took a new direction. Medical ninjutsu and medical knowledge, chakra enhanced strength, and new ninjutsu development all went smoothly. Yudo spent more and more time in the Senju compound, often not returning home and sleeping directly in the room next to Tsunade's. Thus, three months passed after apprenticing under Tsunade. The shinobi world entered winter. The cold wind howled and the world was covered in silver. While Yudo was immersed in training, many things happened outside. The friction between the five great nations intensified, and everyone could smell the scent of war. After a fierce battle with the A and B brothers from Kumogakure, Minato retreated and scathed, gaining great fame. The wife of the Uchiha clan head, Mikoto Uchiha, gave birth to a healthy boy over a month ago, named Itachi Uchiha. The era was quietly changing, though no one knew it yet, except for Yudo. One day, Yudo emerged from three months of intense training and found Tsunade, preparing to leave for a while. The reason was simple, so simple that Tsunade couldn't refuse. Sensei, as a Kanoha shinobi, I've been cooped up in the village for three months. Today, I realize the year is almost over. I should take on some missions and get some fresh air. No one can become strong by just training. Bidding farewell to Tsunade, Yudo left the Senju compound. It was very cold outside and the snow was thick. Yudo looked at the village decorated with snowflakes, then looked at himself, feeling that many things had changed, but some things hadn't changed at all. The caged bird seal was still carved on his head. 
Becoming Tsunade's disciple didn't bring him true joy. The branch family boy glanced indifferently at the distant Hyuga compound and turned away. It was time to take care of some serious business, he thought. Kanoha, 55th year, end of the year. On a snowy day, Yudo packed his bags and left the Hyuga clan's territory. Recently, the Land of Fire had experienced heavy snowfall, covering Kanoha village in a thick layer of snow that crunched underfoot. With the new year approaching, a festive atmosphere filled Kanoha. Even the poorest families prepared a hearty dinner to reward themselves for a year of hard work and to welcome the new year with their loved ones. However, Yudo didn't care much for these celebrations. His parents were dead, and cooking in an empty house without anyone to talk to made him feel stifled. With his bag on his back, Yudo walked out of Kanoha village's gates, as he had done before. Unexpectedly, a blonde woman was already waiting for him outside the village. Yo, my adorable student, Tsunade said energetically, patting Yudo on the shoulder. Leaving the village for a mission now means you won't make it back in time for the new year. Someone has to carry the burden, Yudo replied seriously. Sensei, do you have any orders? If there's anything you need me to do, I won't hesitate, even if it means going through fire and water. The beautiful blonde woman was visibly stunned for a moment before bending down slightly. Yudo, who hadn't fully grown yet, only reached her chin. Tsunade only needed to rest her hand on her knee for their eyes to meet. The last princess of the Senja clan reached out and flicked Yudo's forehead protector. I'm just here to see you off, you silly student. Understood. Hey, safe travels. Suddenly, a shout came from somewhere in Kanoha village. It was Shizun. The little girl was hiding behind a utility pole, her big, lively eyes peeking out. A few days ago, Shizun and Yudo had a small argument, over something trivial like why the fish in his bowl looked tastier than hers. Yudo didn't mind, but the young Shizun held a grudge, vowing never to speak to him again. Yet, here she was today, seeing him off with Tsunade. Thank you, Sensei. Yudo pulled up the collar of his thick coat and turned back. I'll be careful. Go on, Yudo. You're already an excellent Kanoha Shinobi. Yudo waved to Tsunade and the distant Shizun before leaving with his backpack. Once he was out of sight of Kanoha village, he suddenly accelerated to the speed at which Shinobi usually travel when on a mission. Tsunade and Shizun's unexpected appearance left Yudo feeling a bit troubled. He paused his intense training routine to leave the village for a mission, partly to consolidate the results of three months of training and stabilize his rapidly growing combat power. But more importantly, he needed time to handle his own matters. According to the timeline of his past life's manga, next year, which would be Kanoha's 56th year, the Third Shinobi World War would fully break out. Major Shinobi villages and clans would take turns fighting, resulting in countless deaths and injuries. For civilians and most shinobi, the coming years would be tough. However, for those plotting in the shadows, the Third Shinobi World War was the perfect time to make their moves. Hanzo of the Salamander and Danzo Shimura conspired to eliminate Yahiko, the dying Madara Uchiha successfully planted the seeds of madness in Abito's heart. The next few years would be a carnival for schemers. Yudo certainly wouldn't miss this opportunity. War would be the best cover for his actions. Events that would shake the world in times of peace would barely cause a ripple during wartime. Starting is always the hardest part. I can't back down now. Yudo sighed lightly, pursing his lips as he took out the mission scroll while running. His current mission was an A-rank one. As Tsunade's student and a member of a major clan in the village, Yudo already had some status. Combined with his sufficient combat power, he aimed to become a jonin as soon as possible. This would make it easier for him to operate once the Third Shinobi World War began. Jonin were elite forces in each village, capable of leading teams and taking on students. They were well paid and could operate independently. One of the key requirements for becoming a jonin was to have completed a sufficient number of high-quality missions. Executing multiple A-rank missions was a prerequisite for becoming a jonin. 
The task Yudo selected was an assassination mission. He was the only one carrying out the mission. If done cleanly, he would have plenty of time to handle his personal matters. Therefore, once out of the village, he moved quickly. The results of his three months of training were immediately apparent. Due to his medical ninjutsu and chakra-enhanced strength, Yudo now had excellent control over his chakra, allowing him to move faster with less chakra. Medical ninjutsu could also alleviate muscle fatigue, enabling him to cover long distances with minimal rest. Two days later, he successfully crossed the Land of Fire's border and entered the Land of Hot Water. This small country in the northeast of the Land of Fire was long and narrow, serving as a buffer zone between the major nations of fire and lightning. Whenever conflicts erupted between Kanoha and Kumogakure, this small country would be the first to suffer. Of course, it fared better than the Amigakure, the land of rain, at the intersection of the fire, earth, and wind nations, had never known peace since its founding. Yudo had visited the land of hot water several times before on missions, so he was quite familiar with it. He bought a straw hat with a veil from a roadside vendor, which covered his entire face, and then walked along the main road like a leisurely traveler. The most challenging part of an assassination mission was usually finding the target. However, for a Byakugan user, this was never a problem. Yudo only needed to enter the city and activate his Byakugan to complete half of the mission. The other half would be driving a kunai into the target's heart. The winter of Kanoha's 55th year was particularly cold. Not only the land of fire but also the land of hot water experienced continuous heavy snowfall, even reaching the level of a winter storm. Despite being affected by the storm, the civilians in the land of hot water were much worse off than those in the land of fire. As one of the five great nations, the land of fire still had significant economic strength, ensuring that civilians had thick clothes to wear during harsh winters. But the land of hot water was different. This country was too poor. After walking less than 10 kilometers, Yudo saw over 40 small refugee camps where poorly dressed people huddled around fires to keep from freezing to death. Children with sallow faces sang together, wearing thin straw sandals in the freezing temperatures. Women with attractive faces smiled at every passerby, offering their company for just 60 rio, enough to buy a bowl of ramen in Kanoha. Elderly people, gaunt and haggard, were pushed to the outer edges of the fire, praying to the omnipotent sage of six paths for mercy. This was Kanoha's 55th year, less than half a year before the full outbreak of the Third Shinobi World War. In these turbulent times, even a slight disaster or misfortune could plunge civilians' lives into hell. In times of chaos, life was as cheap as grass. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.